Bankli Baba, Kli Baba. What I want? Yes, what you bought today? Yes, what you bought today? Uh, so yes it's been a very beautiful monday year in liberia today is the 19th day of february 2024 or the whole valentine you know thing come beyond us now people still trying to reconcile their differences those who post no dwalu b block b to post b that was what was happening on the 14th of February. Somebody said, oh, damn, we let to bring out old things. Yeah, I wasn't here for a while, so I need to bring out the old things. You know, but you're welcome. This is the nation's premiere show. This is the Spoon Talk, uh, beaming across the Spoon Network frequencies. Uh, that is Spoon 107.5 FM, uh, Fabric 101.1, and uh, Super 95.5. We're also being relayed on other stations across Liberia. As like Grand Crew counted, 10 radio there is relayed laying us in grand crew county i'd love to say thank you to uh, the management of that station as well yes, you we've been relayed in margibi county as well uh Bumi county trust 88.7 fm uh, gibi fm 90.9 there in margibi county and the rest of the stations relaying us across the country and of course we live on spoon tv liberia's biggest online tv platform as well as live on youtube spoon talk Go there and you can watch the show as well. Well, what's happening in Liberia right now? You can borrow your friend's car and now return it for at least three to five days. They wouldn't bother you, you know. But you can't take your friend power bank right now and now return it. <laughs> that one annoys. Even rechargeable fan. These are the things that are, you know, selling fastly in the country. Fan and power banks. All because of what is going on with the Liberia Electricity Corporation, the LEC. But let me bring on Mr. Dwalu, um, he and his people, the yes. year, and we'll move forward with the show, bringing you some trending issues happening across the country. Uh, pleasant night to you, Mr. Dwalu. Thank you so much, Daman, and thank you to the Liberian people. You're welcome. We are talking Liberia consistently without hesitation, without fear or favor, because this country has to matter. I'm going to talk about power bank. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, you know what power bank is? I got no idea what that is. Uh, you know it soon. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> the power bank thing, man, the phone has to be on. Luckily for me, my phone has this thing that recharges every single time. But overall, man, let's talk Liberia. Let's talk it. Everybody, you're welcome. Plenty of plenty to talk. You're kind of talk. Yeah. So as Mr. Dwalu rightly says, a lot for us to talk about, but we'll definitely pick amongst the bunch and the rest of the panelists once they join the show. Um, they will go in details on uh, most of what we'll be highlighting here on the show tonight. Well, wherever it is you're watching us from, those of you watching Spoon TV, we'd love to say welcome to you, like Muna Batade. Um, Ella Hook is also watching. Abraham Amara Duna is following tonight. Elijah uh, W. Doe is watching us from Broadview City, uh, there in district number 17. Rebecca Kova is also watching. Uh, Makina Makina is also following tonight. Mr. Dwalu is definitely going to um, greet the rest of the folks. But what's happening in the country this morning um, on the morning show? Um, we did get a very sad news. Um, it was unconfirmed at the time um, that former Nimba County District Number Nine representative, Honorable um, Gwaiklo, you know, Johnson Gwaiklo, Gwaikolo, yeah, Gwaikolo, you know, lost his life sadly um, today at the Catholic Hospital. Uh, many of the family sources we spoke to, including um, others who spotted him, said they did see him on Thursday at the Senate. Um, during the confirmation hearing of um, Internal Affairs Minister designate Honorable Newmali, and um, others said he was um, at the Methodist Convention on uh, Sunday as well in Nimba County, also during the course of the weekend um, there in Nimba. And tragically, you know, he lost his life uh, today. Our condolences and sympathies to the entire family, the people of Nimba and Liberia at large. He served as representative of District Number no. Nine, Nimba County, for six years in the 54th Legislature. He also served as Deputy Minister of Public Works during the Ellen Johnson Salif regime and also um, served as um, President of the United Methodist University. So he was not just a politician, but also an educator as well. So a great tree has fallen 
there in Nimba, Liberia at large. Mr. Dwalu. Yes, our condolences to the family. Um, he was a statesman. Hopefully, he, he's going to be fit in Berea from and be recognized by his country. But we continue to say to you guys, man, Liberia is growing. One thing I love about this country now, what people don't recognize, it seems every single Liberian is getting involved in the Liberian business. And this is a good thing. For this democracy to grow, everybody has to get involved. You have to say your piece. You're not going to like everybody's position. But what is good is for democracy to grow, all of our poor minds are, if you're not lucky, if you cannot stay in the pressure, get out of the, the kitchen. Mm. By the end of the day, Liberia will be cooked and she will get well done. So we all have to talk about Liberia. Damo, I recognize some of my people here. I see a trickling in here. Let's talk Liberia every single day. I see my brother, Patakali. How you doing, man? My man, we miss you. I know you're backstage, sir. Uh, Margaret Morgan, you're very dongen. Welcome to the show. I see May Moore. I see my Harris. I see Kafa Yama. What's up, young man, Diamond and Dwalu? Thank you very much. I see my sister, Pearl Campbell. I see Mary Chia. How are you doing, Mary? I see Christiana Okara Davis, uh, Mohammed K.S. Masakwe, Mr. Masakwe. Welcome to the show. I see my sister, Grace Falconian. How you doing, Gracie? What's going on, Triple K. Conan. I see Fofi Dukle, Tucker G. Christine, Ruth Samuels Kia. Welcome to the show, my olive son. I'm watching from New Hampshire. We can go over the USA city of Concord, okay? Concord is a beautiful city, actually. I see Larry Martin Tue. I see Kuka Watson. Madam Watson, how are you doing? Newton B. Tamba. Mr. Tamba, hello there, wherever you are. I see Jules Suare. I see Ben Da Kona Kowawen. I see Kambu W. Nemo Sr., UJ Clark. Fange, what's going on? How you doing? How's everything? Clarence Lamy, William Myers, Deccan T. D. Davis. Deccan T. is watching from where? Painesville. How are you doing, y'all in Painesville? I see Eric McGill. Dwaluha, my brother, watching you from the U.S. Yes, how you guys doing out there? Ezekiel Kamara. Um, SB B. My brother B, what's going on, man? I see Prince Balegwe. How are you doing? Sunday, Tube, Ma Harris. Everybody, man, from across the globe, share the show. Let's come and talk about Liberia. We cannot get tired about our common heritage. This country would not change. Our leaders are not going to do what they should be doing by the Constitution until you force the issue. Our job here is to force the issue continuously without hesitation of any kind because this country, we have to be well here this, in this country. We cannot only experience a good life, I put that in quotation, only when we leave this country. It hurts me. This is the only time a Liberian can fully self-actualize and meet his full potentiality. I don't want that. I want you to celebrate it here at home. We have to create that capacity here. Dama. Um, thank you, Dwalu. As you rightly said, we have to keep talking. We have to keep walking the walk and making sure our leaders are held accountable for their actions. In the words of President Boyka, it cannot be business as usual. And for it not to be business as usual, we have to do things that we were not doing as we were before. Uh, but a lot of things happening in the country, Mr. Dwalu. Um, we've talked about the tragic news coming out of um, Nimba County, not just Nimba, but um, the people of Liberia, the late Honorable John Sinkwaikolo, um, lost his life as well. We say condolences to his family um, and the family of the United States University. And wherever it is he served, he touched a lot of lives as well. Um, but what's happening to our foreign mission staff, those on foreign mission? What we've gathered is they've been stranded abroad. You know, there is this TV series, I don't know if you watched it, Banged Up Abroad. They'll be showing people in various prisons, you know, around the world, foreign nationals in various prisons around the world. Yep. But this one is stranded abroad. <laughs> stranded What's a abroad. new series coming up, huh? Yeah, stranded abroad featuring Liberian foreign service staff. According to what we've gathered, some of whom have been speaking to us as well, reaching out to us on WhatsApp and other mediums, that they've been stranded for at least six to eight months, Dwalu. No rent, <laughs> no salaries, <laughs> no benefits. No nothing. No that, nothing. That put double negative. Yeah, inside. and they just sent it out there for six to eight months. Okay. The foreign minister, um, Her Excellency Madam Sarah Beslo Yanti, has got a whole lot of work to do. Yep. Um, that's their way of letting her know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've been using the, the proper communication channels. Yeah. 
but putting it out there in the public you know is going to draw much more attention that they're stranded and because of that what we've been informed of is that it's causing a go slow action already at our embassies and foreign missions that are already slow imagine they're not being paid you know in a foreign country it's not easy to handle. well no, listen uh, most of these locations where the guys are remember now if you're foreign agent or service person you cannot work in these countries because you don't have the proper paperwork to work mm -hmm. uh, the previous administration i mean literally neglected these guys overseas it is a difficult task if you expect a man to serve his country in the foreign country you're not catering to him makina i know the queen not working i tried to rub plenty that way and i'm working so the blindness they can go away but let me say this though our foreign service staff um honorable Buakai, uh, and his administration they do i mean have a massive task before them they have to fix this very quickly it's not just a go slow action it's it's, it's it's a personnel morale across the globe when it comes to the foreign service how is that going to encourage another young man or woman to say listen i want to join the foreign service and will serve this country mm. when you consider that you could be stranded in london and and, and germany somewhere in these are very expensive cities you say oh but at least i own that side trust me until you get there, you don't even understand the difficulties associated with that. I can literally in this country right now, maybe because I'm dwelling now, so people know me. I can go almost to anybody's house in Liberia and say, Oh, but that you it's not like that overseas. Or somebody it's, it's entirely different. They don't have that kind of community that you think about. Almost everybody is to some extent an individual. So if you don't have it, if the government is not taking care of you, you're literally a vigorant mm. in that country. You can't you can't mm -hmm. be anyway. It's not that easy. So we have work to do. Hopefully, the new administration addresses this very quickly. Because if they've done the image of the country, it's literally been ruined. Damn. There is this saying, Dwalu. Mm -hmm. If you can beat them, join them, right? Yeah. yeah. But in our case, we say if we can beat them, take their coach. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> if you can beat them, oh, hmm? oh. take their coach away from them. Uh -huh. And... That's what Liberia has done to Malawi. Remember Malawi got 1-0 in the yeah. in the World Cup qualifiers? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So we went for their coach uh -huh. that they sacked. Imagine. So we went for Liberia, the, the Liberia national team, the Lone Star, has hired. They recently fired huh. Malawian national team coach, who's Correct. from Romania, by the way. Mm. Or if it, the name is Marian Mario Marinika. Mm -hmm. Triple M. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm gonna be winning you. One M for victory, and all M for victory. Mm -hmm. Miriam Mario Marinika has been hired as the top coach of the Liberian national team mm -hmm. after we let Mr. Keita go because of footballing reasons. So the man who was fired for giving poor results to the Malawian national team, we said no, we're impressed that Malawi be on one zero. So we went for him and we hired him. Qualify for him, qualify. He yeah. get the highest UEFA qualification, you know, uh, certificate. He holds the UEFA Pro license, which is the highest football coaching qualification. But Malawi finally meant for poor results. Liberia said no. So I want to understand we'll that. Bring him. Malawi B O. Yeah, one zero. One zero. Yeah. The coach that used Malawi to B O, we hired a coach. Yeah. And we fire. That was saying too, right? Our previous yeah, coach was Keita. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, Mr. Keita. Mm. He was the coach and we yeah. fired him. Mm. The justification is what? Did we give Mr. Enzo Keita the proper tools to make sure that Lone Star succeed? We fire him for footballing reasons. That's what the letter says. That the justification? Yeah, footballing reasons. What the heck is footballing reasons? Well, they're not passing the ball well. We can play second half. Footballing reason. And we went for the coach that Malawi fired too. Say, so even Kufa, you're a Kufa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but still, football stories before you come in quickly, Dwalu. So, FIFA has announced um, that they will be, you know, constructing five football academies in Africa next year. Um, Liberia is included in our plan, including Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Zambia. Um, that was said by a former Arsenal coach who's the chief of global football development, mm. Asi Winga. Put our player in as the winger has announced um, that FIFA is going to construct five footballing academies across Africa next year. Um, they aim at establishing 75 academies worldwide hmm. as of the end of 2026. So beginning next year, um, they are going to 
construct a footballing academy in Liberia, which is going to, you know, help with football development in our country. We need to look at sports as a business now in this country. Really? Our footballers and our athletes shouldn't go, you know, finish playing football and they be asking for money to buy soap to wash their clothes and all that. Kind of our, our, our other countries are making money. Football is a sports is a huge investment value. If you, if it's you, a you massive business. Look, good business. Most cities around the world they fight for a professional team to to make their city home. I'll, I'll give you an example. I live not too far from, from from a place in Massachusetts called Foxborough, and Foxborough. This is where the Patriot Stadium is. Mm. It's almost the entire economy of that city is based off the Patriot Stadium. Because it seems like, look, if Lone Star, I don't know when we would get the concept that for something to be sustainable, it must be self-funding. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat. Anything that you wanted to be prolonged or to last very long time, it has to be self-funding. But we don't think about it. The government cannot fund football if football is not helping fund itself. So whenever we, we are thinking about it, the, the, the youth and sports ministry, they should be strategizing in order to generate their own income. I used to say this all the time. People didn't listen. Look, City Hall, Morovia City Corporation has the capacity to generate nothing less than $50 million a year. Yes, as it sits right now. But who are going there to actually understand how you're going to generate that money? We don't think about football. Say, oh, they will sell tickets. Tickets, the least thing. In fact, most teams don't even care about the ticket. It's the advertisement, mm -hmm. the beverages being sold in the stadium, the frequency the of the games being played, the endorsement deals, mm -hmm. you know, these billboards. But we don't think about them. I always say, I mean, I'm about the TK. We play one game and we'll go and sit down and people expect a paycheck. So other countries get it. They are marketing this. I mean, the football academy in this country, this is how you hone, you know, younger skills. But it seems like the older guys don't want to leave the field, even when they're old. We'll put them there. We need new blood. I mean, look at what the Malians have done. Look at what the Senegalese have done. Look at what the Ghanaians have done. They go to the under 16, under 21. They are honing these skills, mm -hmm. and we're not taking our young people there because nobody is funding this. We have a problem. How are we going to address these problems? We have to make calculated decisions. So listen, we are going to make decisions based on merit, meritocracy. This issue of mediocrity is not working in this country. If we don't take our best and brightest to guard the affairs in this country, we're going to just be sitting around doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Mm. Aggressive when it comes to governance. But when you talk it, they say, oh, like, we're not ready for a year. Old. It, it can't happen in the country. We'll tell you that. Let me quote what Ellen Johnson Salib said. And I, and, I, and, I, and I have my qualms with Ellen, but President Ellen Johnson Salib, but she said this. If your dream. dreams are not big enough, mm. if, they don't, <clears throat> if they're not big enough to scare you, they're not big enough. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. We have to think very big mm -hmm. and very large about Liberia. Aim for the heavens. If you lay them on this car, I mean, the stars, you're doing well. But we just say, you know what, Ron? It can be done. We cannot collect your garbage property in Liberia. We cannot provide 100,000 jobs in the span of three years in this country. Who told you that? It is more than possible. It's more than possible to put these men to work. It's more than possible to give the police officer three uniforms every single year. It's more than possible to make sure every single depot has a vehicle that is gassed and maintained by the government. And to do organization, we can do that. But we think we cannot do anything. Is it oh, that's not possible. Oh, by LD, I think oh. an anti -anti problem, an anti -anti problem. It is possible, yeah. but we refuse to. So you talked about, did you mention the word 100,000 jobs? Yeah. Did you mention a statement, 100,000 jobs? Yeah. Yeah. So that has led me into our next, you know, news that we have, trending issue that we have is um yeah. So if you are LWSC, mm -hmm. the Liberia Water and Sewer Corporation, <laughs> just quickly, Mr. Dalu, I know you can answer questions very fast. Between janitors and professional chemists and plumbers, when you are to employ on a scale of preference, who are those you are going to employ in such an institution? I've been very chemist all day. And I got a special thing for chemists, by the mm -hmm. way. My wife's a chemist, so oh, okay. I understand it. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hire the chemist. Mm -hmm. So, Moali, the MD designate of the Liberia Water and Sewer Corporation today, you know, was present before the Senate for his confirmation hearing and told us exactly what we all knew that the LWSC. The Liberia Water and Sewer Corporation, the dead weight LWSC, that before you get water, <clears throat> y'all know. Yeah. There was a massive employment scheme that went on. That from 2017, LWSC had 189 
employees from 2017 to 2023 LWSC jumped from 189 to 669 employees but guess what between october to no between july to november of 2023 LWSC employed 20 janitors <laughs> and 85 security officers Value. 20 janitors like one janitor assigned to one bathroom <laughs> 20 janitors and 85 security guards so more has promised to do systematic hr audit and whether this was a pre pre planned strategy, Dwalu, you know, to bring in more people, we were told by sources were in the LWSC that they had drawer, they had deputy drawer, they had assistant drawer, then they get assistant to the assistant drawer, then they get a standby drawer. The MD, according to what we gathered reportedly, had three drivers. One draw at the rear draw, the other draw at the deputy to the rear draw, then the other men at the substitute to the deputy draw. <laughs> Three. <laughs> For an entity, a public utility entity that performs poorly. Every day, no chemical. Look, the last MD Alfonso Gay had promised to pay the salary arrears of the employees eight to nine months. The people stayed looking for it. But he walked away with a cool seventy-five thousand dollar SUV, of course, for which he was on the job for not more than six months. Of course, from one eighty-nine to six hundred and sixty-nine. Draw deputy assistant, assistant of the deputy, then a standby draw just in case the assistant sick. <laughs> and you wonder why we can't get water? They have more chemists than they have more janitors than chemists. what's your take let me say this let me send lots of love to to clara howard how are you doing mama how's everything to my brother ahmed freeman let me say this to I, I hear uh, my brother and friend george lobo posted on a page today in 2017 ria had 250 employees as of 2024 the ria has i believe 730 employees did we up the amount of planes that are coming to liberia what is happening at these entities? It actually brings down efficiency massively. Because what they've done, I don't, I'm not worried about the payroll so much. I'm worried about the service provision to Liberian citizens at these entities that are overcrowded. They're not going to do nothing. That when you go to the passport division, if you're going to get 10 people, you got 300 people. That, but everybody running outside, my man, you want to do your passport? Yes, more thing, your man, you want to do your passport? This is what you do to this entity. You really, really decrease efficiency. Mm hmm and I want to say this to people that always say, you know, uh, when I make these recommendations about job creation in this country, that it's fantasy. I want you to read some of the publications that I put out there, how we can create these jobs. It's not a fantasy, my brother. I know because you think it's bigger than what, the way you think, you consider that a fantasy. It's not a fantasy to create 100,000 jobs in the span of three to six years. It's not a fantasy. I spell this out how it can be done. In fact, north of 100,000 jobs is possible in this country. You gave me the opportunity I can create those jobs here in Liberia. This is not a fantasy. Let's think bigger than what, just because you can't think something doesn't mean it's not possible. It is more than possible. Let me give you a quick synopsis. We have a little country, very small country, but the capacity is here now. If you go to the Rwandans over the last 20 years, this country had literally nothing. Nothing. $300 per annum. That's what people are living on in Rwanda. It's arguably a middle-income country in the span of 10 to 20 years. That's what Kigami has done in this country. Calculated decisions. He mm. was practical, very pragmatic about the decisions he made about this country. Let me tell you what develops a country. This is something that has been published a million times. I want you to pick up a book once in a while and read and see what other countries are doing, how it can be done. Three things develop a country. And sometimes we don't want to consider those three things. What we've done in this country, we refuse to understand that decisions have to be made. They have to be very practical. Number one, Practicality is number one to develop a society. Be pragmatic about what that system can produce. Number two, it's important the rule of law. 
The rule of law has to guard the affairs in the country without any fear or favor. If you want something done, follow the rules. If you are not following the rule, the person must be held responsible, both punitively and compensatorily. If you're not doing that, the country is not going to develop. Third, and most important, it must be entirely based on selecting your best and brightest minds to chart the course of that country without any form of favoritism of any kind, without nepotism, without cronyism. You have to push the issue. But what we've done in this country, we give positions to people who are not fit to deliver in that position. And number two, we do not gauge them. We do not measure their output. We do not demand production out of them. You think it's not possible because you have not seen it done. But it's been done all around the world. We're not reinventing the wheel, my brother. The wheel has already been invented. All we have to do, we have to employ the measures that have been employed in other countries to see that country develop. It is possible. I want you to think beyond yourself, beyond what you think is possible. Pick up a book and read a little bit more. It is possible to create 100,000 jobs. We have to put these men to work. And we will continue to pound this issue because we know it's possible. Damon, see you. Welcome to the show, man. Boom, I salute you, sir. Yeah, how you guys doing, man? Not too bad. You look a little mm, down. Yeah. You hungry? No, I'm good, though. After oh. listening to you preaching, I mean, <laughs> when the pastor is preaching, we got to pay attention and be quiet. The Lord is in his holy temple and the earth remains silent, so... That's why I'm down. But also, I'm uploading some pictures and video uh, thank for the God. program tonight. Thank God. I didn't so, upload the picture with you. So I'm not in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dwadu and the 100,000 job, Dwadu. Send them away. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I believe it's time for you to come home. I think yeah. she understanding that uh, you're making a lot of withdrawal from the bank account. Uh, there's no nothing you can show for it. So I think it's time for you to come with Duano. I, I really, really believe that it's time for you to come home. You know, she's concerned. All the money, you know, piece of uh, your bag of cement at seven dollars. How you know? A bag of cement at seven dollars, and you telling her so a bag of cement at eleven dollars. So oh, seven, nine, ten, eleven is four dollars. Oh, if myself? you buy, if you buy four dollars, if you buy three hundred bags, at least. You're walking home with 1200 Who are you giving that 1200 extra to? You see? So, so she was saying. That's the not ready yet. So, uh, but I think, uh, let, let's take a vote tonight. Who all want Duaru to go home? Come back. You know, uh, just when talking about coming back home, not even stopping in Senegal or where, just come back home. Uh, but Duaru has patient though. Who? Patient. What do you patient you? I believe that's, that her name is Patient. She was with Mama Bridge Mesa, the representative. And she said she wanted to talk to you. And ah. you saw that. But let me finish now. You asked how she doing. So let me finish. Oh, okay. you, you remember that, right? Yeah, I spoke to her already. Okay, and I'm so I, 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 I am not lying, right? No, you're not lying, they won't. They won't like you today. Okay. So you spoke to her, but uh you know, and, and you spoke with the representative too, right? And you promised to see her the next day. Did you see yes. her? I went there, I actually did go there. Did you see her? No, I didn't see her. I left a message, but I was so busy I had to leave. Okay. But I have to What's today? Today's Monday. Tomorrow, Tuesday. So I'm about to be going to town. We'll swing by. What's her name again? It's her name patient. Did I get the name right? I mean, yeah, yeah, your connection is bad anyways. No, my connection is not bad. Not everybody can hear me. Did I get the name right? Damo, come back on the show, Damo. Let me make sure that everyone can hear me, please. Damo, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. Then why he's coming to Brooklyn? No, well, the internet doing it, bro. Oh, I'm, not coming, I'm not coming to Brooklyn, but the thing is that the question is too high, so you can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are surprised that I brought the conversation up, but I have witnesses though. 
think you, I think I think you got to come on, Dwalo. I think you really got to come on. I yeah, asked yes, yeah, yeah, what say, say everything on the show. We we'll say everything if you don't come on. If you fail to come on this week, I will start calling names. And the librarian people know me for that. If you fail to come on this week, and I will start calling names. Yeah. Call Neo. Call Neo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm almost done. Uh, yeah, that is cute. That is cute for you. That for you. That for my sister, not for me. Even my daughter, I'm for Camo down. So. Uh, I mean, the family say, come on, can't chill and go back. When I'm on the show, you're calling me. We have not opened the phone line yet, so please do not call me till we open the phone line. Dr. Richardson, welcome to Spoon Talk. Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you doing? How are you? Well, yeah, Dr. Richardson. Stephen, how are you doing? Ah, thank God. Everything is okay. We're here. Good we got a lot of stuff happening. Happy President Day. Do I like the fact that America just put all the president on one day? No, but they, but what? Hmm. Yeah, right? That's exactly what they did, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's me. Sorry, that's me. Hmm. It, but it's still coming back from your end. Can you check it again? Uh, can we just mute? And when you speak, it will get on mute. Uh, do I know? My thing is, I think that should happen in Liberia, though. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That should happen in like, bro. They just said Jimmy Brown's birthday, the Tuckman birthday, the somebody now uh they're gonna say president. We are holiday too. Everything should be just one, you know. Find a day and let's just celebrate all the president's birthday. I agree. Yeah. On the president's day. Yeah, that that, that that would be that would be so interesting if we can do that. You guys just mess up now. You got my Ellen Day, Joe We Are Day, Waka Day, Chastito Day, Seven Kilo Day, and all these different, different, different days. Uh, this is it's embarrassment. You know what? I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you, Dwight. We hear you. Yeah, I drove by the fucking phone church yesterday. Uh, ah, man. I, I'm, I'm loved out, though, buddy. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bit of internet problem, so when I click on try again, so it's gonna upload it. We can hear you, Dwight. You can talk to us. We hear you. Yes, hear me. Yeah, I drove out the fucking phone church yesterday, and ironically, there was no security guards. The whole play was open. I said, But when uh, they play, what you can you got EPA officer, people saying, oh, Aaron, What happened? Sentinel, I was curious. I mean, it was on a Sunday, too. You know, I want to see the church go. They actually put an 8 p.m. right in front of the church. A UAB ATM is there. I said, but when I, how can nobody want to trust me? I didn't, I didn't see anybody going to church there yesterday that I, that, I, that I recognized. Because the president, the bishop is not in town. You know, the choir members not left. Uh, they went to F4 Baptist Church <laughs> to seek new employment. So the reverend that was left in charge he went to F4 Baptist Church to be the associate pastor of Bishop. Uh, Bishop Fuckley Klein himself is catching birds and speaking to pigeons. So that's exactly what happened. What do you expect, man? I was hoping to see the church open in Babrin. That was what I was hoping for, but I guess I was asking for too much. I heard today. Uh, let me bring, oh, let me welcome Sister Glendy. Glendy, it's good to see you. How are you doing today? Hello, hello, everybody. Hi, Doc. How are you? We are not hearing you, Dr. Richardson. I'm good. Old. How are you doing, Toby? Nice to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Baby T, hello. Hello, hello Baby T. <laughs> hello, JJ. Excuse me, you know the mini or opa? Somebody told me the mini or opa. Opa is my name. Opa la dualu name. Opa la proper yeah. kid name. They say, so, what is, do you know the meaning of Opa? No, you can give your own meaning. I mean, it, it, I Opa. I the meaning from, the, from you. When it, why the name you Opa? So my little sister named Old Lady, and my name is Opa. The last two of my mother. Oh, okay. So you know yeah. the meaning of your name. 
So I know the meaning, but I really wanted I want to hear from you. I mean, since yeah, you have I mean, I you, you, you come up with the information. They say when they put like you open in a me, you are acting like old man when you are small. So I look why you call me. So what like what a name you picky? Yeah, call the man. You get win on him. I've been very I've been very nice. That's a rich thing. I really see. I feel like it's not it to do. You know what I mean? I didn't say anything. You brought it up to me. Special. Special. Well, let me let me tell you why I was named Piggy. I was actually they were going to that the richest and asked her why they named her special too. Yeah, so we're talking about these names. <laughs> I was actually born in Lamco Hospital, Buchanan. And and when I was born, I weighed 13 pounds. Who are you? And the American nurse at the time <laughs> referred to me as a cute little pig. Uh, something like that was so fat and chubby, and so that's why she was like, Oh, she's very chubby. And she gave me that name, Piggy. So that's how I got that name. I weighed 13 pounds at birth. We are not going to ask you how many pounds you weigh now. We're I'm not doing that because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I will not do that. Yeah, thank but you. If you want to tell us, you can tell us, but I'm not going to no, ask I'm you. I'm not doing this, sir. I'm okay. even falling in the mm -mm. Richard, so why, why your parents name you special? Uh, I'm the first. My grandmother, Mimi, Rose Stevens, and I'm the first grandchild. And when she held me, she thought I was a special baby for her. I was beautiful and just special to the family. So she's nice. like, this is, this is my special. And the judge, you know, my brother and Jess call you there and you from, from there on. So, so you're That's special. Nice. We got picky. Uh, uh, Mr. Dwalu, why? Why did you open her name? Well, the open name it is called a play name, but it just sometimes they the pass of people do yeah, give it to the first child, open now or open yo. So it's like uh, if to say you replacing the ancestor, so to speak. So open is a very common other name, like daddy boy, tutu gear, uh mommy. It's, yeah, it's, it's a play name, but that's that's so people that call me open really really know me from childhood, you know. They'll say Opa, yeah. They'll yeah. Be. yeah. So so Glennie said that the name people Opa B, if you have wisdom, were you were you did you act like an old man when you were a kid? No, the old people because you like the first grandson, since so to oh, speak, okay. they to be a, around you because my grandfather, I spent a lot of time with him. So when yeah. you're born, you got a first grandchild, they carry you everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Opa, yeah. You old before your time. Yeah, you yeah, actually the old people. Hey, Opa. Yeah, Opa. Yeah. So so baby T, why the name you baby T? <laughs> That's not what the name is. I tell you. Yeah. When I hear you, Dama. So my, my middle name is Yanti, um, mm -hmm. which means one for the future. And to be saying Yanti, 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 so they just call it short and say baby T. Yeah, that's the reason for my baby T. Yeah. Oh, your baby T. Okay. okay. And all that. But yeah. It's okay. I'm not adding a part there. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I mean, I mean, this uh, these, these are these are our play names, and you're right, Dwight. The people that you grew up with when they know those names, uh, a lot of folks come in and say, Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Glenny actually gave the real reason why they named her Piggy because someone told me, and I thought she was going to, and you know, just well, give us different reasons. Uh, yeah, it's Piggy or pronoun. You got a pronoun. Wait, 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 Nelson. That, Nelson's supposed to have that video, though. Oh, yeah. that, we have that video ready. A pronoun, proper now. Everything. A proper now. Describing yeah. me. Yeah. I, think, I think that video, we should have that video. But, Dama. Yes, sir. We don't have it. I, I sent it to Nelson. To hmm. pull it up because I know Dwaru saying he's going to You read an Opa for you? Huh? I said that Opa conversation for you. No, so Dama, let me just give it to you. Please uh, pull it up. Uh, no, because Dwaru said he wanted us to play it. Oh. And, <laughs> but y'all understand oh. that Professor King, like, bro, he's not crossing again. So. <laughs> <laughs> then you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, come on now. 
<laughs> but yeah, pick it up pro now. You write proper key. Pick it up pro now. Mirror that pro now. So no problem. Okay. Yeah. But we got a story out there. I know we'll do that pro now. We got a story out there that a boy my Kamara is buying a brand new car for 120000 That's a BS. That is never true. I woke this man up and sleep and said, hey, Stanton, you, you, you know me better. That's true. He would not even do that. You, you know, but my, and seriously, but my camera said, hey, Stanton, you know me, man. CDC need to stop. Listen, I, I like to find out when they say criticize without craziness. <laughs> yeah. Criticize without craziness. For them to say the man, hey man, we're 25 days into this thing. 20 that 25? Yeah. 25, 26 days. Then you're telling us that a man bought a car for 120000 This is, this, Dwaru, I don't know. Where are we, Dwaru? We're not hearing you, Dwaru. Can you hear us? I know they're having an issue. Dr. Richardson talked to us. This thing that he bought a car for 120000 That's a joke. So whoever said that he to come and defend himself? I mean, I it doesn't even add up to me. It doesn't sound like Bama Kamara. So I I know who put it in our chat room. Maybe they need to come and tell her where, how, when, and where they saw it. Now, I said, do call his name. Don't be afraid. Of, I said, do. No, I, and I, I, I said, do. Let me interrupt you, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't wait. I want I said, do to come for us to start this because I got a breaking news on I said, do. Oh, yeah. Not no, no, I do. I don't want to say this behind him. Glennie. Let's be fair. We're talking about all the other important issues. Mo Ali confirmation hearing today, the president, you know, in the mansion, some development from there. We're talking about it. We're talking about what is happening around the globe. But let's while we're getting ready to have this conversation. I said though, name came up in one of the internal order report that he still possess a government vehicle. Really? Well, yeah, no, 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 seriously. I want everybody to hear this. Mm. I I said though, stay moving around with a ministry of youth and sport, government owned vehicle. He say he's not turning over. Why that his personal property? I mean, I said though all the nation explanation tonight. He does. He it's, does. It's not, listen, I understand he appears on spoon will not stop him. But if I said don't need, it's in an internal audit report that he must turn the car over and I said don't stay keeping this car and using the car to hold fire coal and transport people. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Mr. So Dwaddo, you know I said though, you need to ask him. You guys always bump into each other. Are you hearing us, Dwaddo? They meant dancing oh. But what demo? What men are hearing us? So that, that Glennie talked to us. I said, though, is moving in that direction with a government vehicle. I can't wait to hear from him. I mean, he needs to answer it because one of the things that I think he has become is serious propagandist. He shares all of the stories. Most of the stories he shares he share is not accurate. He's the first. It's like he doesn't sleep constantly <laughs> sharing stories. So let him come talk about his own record. That did he turn over the everything? Did he even report his assets? He's calling for people to declare asset. Did he declare his asset as a deputy minister while leaving? He's not exempted from the list. He's a part of the list, so he needs to be able. We able. To, we need to hold him accountable also. Yeah, all day he talking, asking people to turn in assets, and you still driving the people pick up. I don't know who, let's see, I don't know who out there, Liberians need to hear this one. I said, though, it's our friend. He, he, he comes on spoon all the time. 
but I do believe that this is troubling for the nation, that I said, do we come and talk? And then he is refusing, refusing to even Zoka Wilson, the minister proper, give everything that he gave him. He gave it back. That's, that's a good thing. That's what's exciting. The incoming minister, what's his name? Ko Bangalow, Councillor Ko Bangalow, is on point. That Zoga Wilson said, let my two hands, Nikki have come into this world, Nikki I'm returning. He put his hands up. He said, I came with nothing, I'm leaving with zero. But why I said, though, keeping the company, uh, the, the, the Minister of Youth and Sport car? Dr. Richardson, this is, these are some of the things we are talking about. And I can't wait for Asin Doe to show face, maybe because of this reason, he's not coming on the show tonight. Uh, no, seriously, maybe because of these and many other reasons, Asin Doe will not come tonight, but I hope he can appear. Why is he keeping the company cars? He and the other gentleman, I don't want to call the other gentleman name. Dwalu, can you hear us now? Are we good? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? That's a report, Dwalu. Yeah. I have confirmed the report, and I just can't wait for Asido Do to come for us to discuss this, that he refusing to turn over Liberia Youth and Sport Ministry vehicle, Dwalu. Senzo, let me say this to you. Why should Asido return the vehicle? It's not for okay. him. Okay, what consequence does he stand to, to, to bear? No. Does he stand to bear any consequence? Cool, they can take it go from him. him. Yes. yes. They can re remove it from him. They can take it away from him. Yeah, cool, they Bangalore can... go after him. If Cool Bangalow does it, I will call him and well, actually I will go after Cool Bangalow. You're missing my point. I said, do that any other government official in this country does not have to do anything, even if they have government property, because there is absolutely no consequence. Why should he? We don't look. We expect people to behave rationally. No, people will not behave rationally. This is why we make laws. Those laws are not meant to be on the books to so just sit there. The Constitution is a living, breathing entity. If you don't exercise it, it dies with time. Acedo behaves in the faction, if this is true, because Acedo will not be consequence for it. Senta, do you really believe? But I, Dwaru, that, I don't mean to cut you off. That's when we say that we're looking at past, we're looking at now and hoping that there will be consequences, especially if he's in the audit, that he has to turn it in. We hope that there will be consequences where he has to turn. Because the thing about why is even more important, as it is singing every day about people declaring their assets and he hasn't done his and he's still holding. So the other thing is, can we ask and make sure he's not on the payroll? He's not getting paid. Maybe he's one of those ghost individuals that receive a salary. Oh, yeah, that's 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 prices, huh? <laughs> no, no, seriously. It's that's not, it's not, not on the payroll. But when I, Dwaru, Dwaru, I disagree with you, and I will agree with Glenny. But I'm feeling got, Okay, sorry. Finish. <laughs> finish. Okay, finish. <laughs> Glenny, my issue here is, I say though should not return the vehicle like anybody else in this country who takes government property who steals from government there is absolutely no consequence before i lay this premise let me just finish very quickly in the state of new jersey west Stanton, opa weather only i can guarantee you the state of new jersey's vehicle you would not even want to drive it home you're not even going to drive it home because the consequence that Tastro is very heavy as it though has no incentive no reason why you should do anything and nobody's going to consequence him until we consequence people, they will behave the way they want. That's my point. I understand that's your point, Dwalu. But again, on the other side, I'm not understanding saying that you want these things to continue. We got acid door on Spoon Talk every evening mm, okay. saying Tabata yeah. defending something that he shouldn't be defending. Mm. But yet and still, he's keeping the ministry car. Not one. He and another colleague, I'm not calling this gentleman name, they asked to come on the show. Now, the government will have to go and purchase new vehicle. And guess what happened? Because of this vehicle they are keeping, let's welcome the, the ambassador, Prince Baswell. But because of this vehicle they are keeping, uh, 
Uh, I, I should tell you guys, uh, though, the Vigo Glenny does not belong to Liberia. It's for one of our partners, our donors' partners. So now it begins to be a problem that is saying, Liberia, you pay for our car or we will draw certain of our benefits. Mm -hmm. Why acid though is putting the country under this problem? And people in the bag and say, stand up, don't bring it up. If I don't talk about acid though, that I will look at Claire Claire in the eye. They actually have a show. <laughs> because it's total embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I ain't getting people that car. Not only one, two vehicles. He and one of his friends. Oh. Yes, I, no, no, this is not a joke. We have acid door name on record, oh. on document. To tell you the truth, I asked acid door. I, I call him, I asked him, what are you doing with the government vehicle? He laughed. He said, but tell them to come take it from me. Can you imagine? But you want to hold other people accountable. Are you serious? I, I can't wait for door to come on the show. He said, tell him to come take it from me. I let let him 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 I said. I don't know that Ed Remy Gray, I say I'm mad with him, but sometimes the statement that Ed Remy Gray can make, miss, shoot on sight. Huh? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Grab acid door and jail him for time indefinite. Not even three days. Indefinitely. Hmm. <laughs> I'm calling for the arrest of acid door. <laughs> He's got a lot of us, Salt and pepper is ready. Salt and pepper is ready. No, they gotta get me man first, man. For real, how can you ask a dog come on the show every day, lying on Joseph Waka, lying on other issues, but you on the show every day, and you refusing to turn over? They said turn over everything. Mm -hmm. Even your girlfriend, you get asset, though you got to turn the girlfriend over yes. to a government property. <laughs> yeah, man. That's in your hand. <laughs> to, to be frank. You are making Connor. You are making Connor great to enjoy this moment. You <laughs> laughing? Yeah, man. No, when I heard the thing today, right? And I received all the talk, man. And I see asset, though. No, I said, but they got to get. See, this should get drafted, though. Yeah, I don't know why it takes to, to straighten our country up. We'll be like this for 100 more years. We'll be complaining. Stand up. Stand up. You got to enforce, enforce, enforce. Let people feel the weight. That's the only way our country will go, will go right. Just shoot and shoot and shoot. Hey, hey thank God, credit, great king. Okay, but, but if possible, too. <laughs> You're called Medicare men, even though stand up, spend three days there. Four Stay days, but man, make it four them back. No, the, the yeah. day yeah. I, left, I, left, I left, I left after 12 o'clock, so it was added to me. <laughs> that four days, four and a half. That four days, no, great, great. it's right, it's, it's right. Um, I'm standing little. We joke about these things. Um, I, I, I think it was maybe a year ago, there was a paper out there. I actually published a paper called Liberia Demands Constitutional Ferocity. And one of the arguments I made in that paper is this, if we if we continue to just uh, be cavalier about the issue of law enforcement, accountability, mm -hmm. accountability is not something that is being done just to scare somebody. It is for the system to work so little Kebe can eat three times a day. Yep. Every single time you keep a government vehicle, you are actually killing somebody in Bapalu County. We have to see these things for exactly what they are. The issue of government is not a child's play thing. Look, I'll... there go. That's not the impression of the country. Watch. Let me say this, we'll come to you, might as well. Because maybe do I don't check in break because you know why you check in break. We the military, we think outside the back sometimes. And I get blamed by the but yeah, I, was no, no, I was saying this, but mm -hmm. I want the ambassador run away for the ambassador gone. But let me say this though: it's fair to say, great. What accident do doing? They are doing it fearlessly. To be frank, <laughs> the thing accident do will sit down and say, "I will do this." In no real government, twenty-five days into that government, they arrest accident doing it yet. But you know what? The puppet and the people that he bringing, they, 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 they believe in diplomacy. But we see this thing, we see this thing, don't do diplomacy with them. 
For asking them to ask me, and say, but tell them to can't take it. Hey, man. You are muted, Colonel Gray. No, but, but center is that culture of impunity that, that is so vexing. That that deming uh, uh, culture where we have, you remember the guy who uh, Pepsi Yeka was defying yeah. the uh, Grace Bay? But the moment he had one or two statements, he saw him running like chicken. Sam, 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 Sam Gay, not Grace Bay, Sam Gay. Okay, somebody was defying, by the way. But the moment he heard certain, you know, stern statement, you saw him running like chicken, bringing that, that stuff back, right? The okay. man said the man called his ambassador. He so, called actually my brother said, Becky, can you carry? Because Sam Gay, yeah, uh, Yerry called a great saying, shoot on side. I oh, don't want him to shoot me on side. Can you carry? Can you carry? And seriously, seriously. Because you know, Sam Gay wasn't joking. And I think that's that's exactly what you need. When you he wasn't start, joking. People are defining it in this term. You have to, you, they are testing your result. Let me tell you something. They're trying to twist you somehow. And if you don't show your juice, that's going to be the culture. I, I would have, I would have gone for, 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 you know, Isaac Doe and and make sure that if he turning that that vehicle with uh, a government, he not turning the vehicle or he turned himself. Seriously, with rental fees. Well, well, let's, 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 let me say this, guys. I, 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 ambassador, my man, you gotta change your name, Ambassador Mike. So that I didn't give you now. Let, let us say this to be fair. That was the news, man. That yeah, yeah. is he talking? No, no, Lina. <laughs> that one. is speaking? The Lina one. Lina one. No, but, but, but let's see, actually, what are <laughs> they? Be there. No, but let's see something. What are they? I said, don't need it. It's an even pro now, name. Let's see. Okay. Your mommy, let, me, let me answer the question here. That's a beautiful question. Her mind is married. And the person that calls it in the ring, they will not hear her. First thing from the red, I pull now. Give me my hand. All first name are pronoun. So let's move on. All first name are pronoun. So <laughs> please pass that talk to us, man. All right, quickly. Uh, I mean, guys, I've not been I've not been on to our audience. So back to Francine, uh, happy to see you again. Uh, Dwalo, uh, Conor Gray, and Damo, I'm happy to see all you guys. I've been, I've been a little bit busy in the background. I've been paying attention to, <clears throat> to the, uh, the Munich Security Conference, uh, like it, which took place from the 16th to the 18th in Germany. Uh, every well-meaning Liberian who are thinking Liberian who understand uh, international politics, are, are interested in geopolitics, uh, international security, will have to pay attention to this particular conference. It's an annual conference, very major, important global decisions are made there on security, cooperation, investment, and business. It's almost like uh, Davos, but it's far more on a very higher level, so people need to pay attention to that as well. Uh, on the issue of, of, of Isaac Doe, let me just quickly pivot to domestic issue. I think Isaac Doe needs, needs to be, to stand up to his own words that he has uh, regurgitated on, 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 on Spoon TV so many times in terms of accountability, uh, uh, honesty, and decency. Uh, to put it in our simple librarian people, English, my man, turn the people car back to them. It does not belong to you. Give it back. So that your down. reputation can remain exactly your reputation can remain whole. But uh for me today, I got something to talk about. I got boon to pick today. I got boon to pick on the library flag. For those that are detail-oriented people in the country, I'm ashamed that we have overlooked this little detail consistently. And I think that if I bring it to the perception of librarian people, we'll begin to see it everywhere over and over. We got too many different librarian flags in the country these days. The colors of the flag are not the same. The way in which our flags are being treated is bad. If you look at all of the government agencies, apart from the armed forces of Liberia, all of them treat the librarian flag like some kind of 
uh, cloth. Look at the way they host the flag behind them. Look at the way they position the flag. It's all completely wrong. And that has to change. That has to change. We need one standard of Liberian flag in the country, one standard of color flag in the country, and one color standard of blue, one color standard of red, and one color standard of white. We cannot have a different color in the Senate, a different color in the office of the president, a different color in the, 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 the judiciary and the executive and the legislature. We need to have a standard color. The second thing is the way we host the flag is wrong. If you look at how the AFL hosts the flag, it's the proper way. Dripping flag means weakness. And that has to change. That's one of my bones I'll be picking. I'll also be picking a bone on front page Africa. I've been on this network talking about the consistent, uh, 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 consistent way in which we have not paid attention to civil service, I mean, to foreign service salary and rent. Finally, front page Africa, February 19, after more than, I don't know how many months I've been talking about it, finally picked up the story. She on you front page Africa. You should carry that story from now on every day in a piece of little corner in your in your newspaper because those guys that are out there in the field are suffering i've been saying it that for four months they haven't taken they haven't taken pay now it's now six months lastly on the issue of the finance minister car issue please y'all please stop it y'all please stop it y'all start that cheap propaganda against the finance minister you should know that man by now he's a man of his word he stands for what he believes in and he believes in Liberia, and he will not do that to Liberian people. So you stop that cheap propaganda against the finance minister, please. Lastly, thank you. Thank you. Recently, I saw a communication. I saw a communication for the the, the uh, Ghanaian embassy that appeared on the the executive mansion Facebook page. I would like to talk about that. That was a blunder, and we have to fix that. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Maxwell. Let's hear the intro from Conor Gray. Gonna great. Well, um, you know, I, I heard that uh, uh, finally Professor uh, Alautupa uh, might be uh, appointed as uh, Governance Commission Chair. Uh, that is a that is just a sigh of relief, you know, because uh, uh, these are some of the individuals who would like to see in public domain, especially when it comes to the issue of, um, of um, you know, people being very humbly uh, honest in what they do. Um, I think uh, Professor Larry Tupper knows his stuff, and we would like to see a breath of fresh air in those domains, especially like uh, good governance. Uh, in addition to that, also, uh, uh, you know, I'm concerned about still the way the some of the the appointments are being made in the security sector. Uh, serving in a capacity does not make one a professional, but rather let's go back and look at your your accomplishments and your and your legacy. And uh, those are the ones who will mark you by when we're doing performance evaluation. What did you do when you were there? Give us a, a rundown of what you've done. And Dr. Richardson always impressed on that. And that's because that's how you, you mark the, the accomplishment, achievement of someone. Not because they served that capacity before, they've been there before, they're all over the place. What did they do while they were there? And I'm not seeing those kinds of individuals within our security sector. We only have people who have record of serving but what was accomplished? Uh, somebody is talking about um, <clears throat> the the military. I had to correct the former defense minister when he was chief of staff because he transposed the flag. If you have gone to DNC school, drill and ceremony, and capture that that that, that essence of, of all of those kinds of things, draw the notes, you can transpose those things. Those those are those are Conduct on becoming. If, if you did that, you could lose your job. That just tells you that you don't know the, the essence of the flags. 
not necessarily, as Prince is saying, not necessarily to just put the flag down, but you want to know how to position the flag, where you stand behind the flag. There are so many things involved. When I see a soldier who people bring in force for good, that's how I measure their performance. It means you have power. Let's do the intro. We we'll get into the conversation. Uh, well, you know, I'll go. I know yeah, whenever yeah. I talk about defense, you can shake. I don't know why. No, 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 no. I, I want us to do our intro quickly. Then we'll, get into, the main, intro. You, we'll get into the main juice. Because I know, uh, 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 Glenny, can we come to you? I see Acido in the back. Before you run, let's just bring it in real quick. Uh, yeah, let's bring it in. Glenny, talk. Um, let me, let me, uh, he got up from the seat. A little bit, somebody asked him to come in. He said he doesn't want to come on the show today. <laughs> I, I'm receiving, I'm seeing him. They are talking in the back. Uh, because of this car issue, it's total embarrassment to ask it though. So immediately when he see that, I'm going to bring him on. I want the people to capture him quick. So if you get your picture, to your camera today, just just when I bring him, capture him, please. Because it look like they're convincing him to come on phone talk tonight. Glenny, where are you, man? Which side are you coming from? Um, two things for me that's trending um today. Um, I heard there was a death of a young. Liberian woman in Kenya. I think that story is is slowly developing. Um, we will hope that it will claim the attention of the Liberian government and also our foreign minister um, found there this morning. Um, the other thing is over the weekend, I think starting last week, Wednesday, um, this is no promotion, but um, I think it will be good for us. There's a new movie that's trending, Breaking the Bush, Breaking of the Bush. It encompasses everything about Liberian culture. It's just promoted a movie. Everything. I'm just saying it's trending for me all you, you, over. you are taking business from, from us, Glenda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. But anyways, it encompasses everything about Liberia. Today I listened to, today was a holiday, President's Day, so I had the opportunity to listen to, to more Ali's confirmation, and I was extremely proud. Um, it what it said to me in short that when you're well learned in an era, well versed in an area, you're able to um, to uh, um, expose yourself so that people will know that you know what you know. And I was really proud in watching it. I also saw today that Dr. Yure um, declared his assets. He was just appointed um, last week. And he already declared his assets and posted and are read in and stuff. I would hope that others would follow. I continue to call on the speaker, Sponati Kofa, to declare his asset, follow suit of the pro temper Yomli Kanga Lawrence. So looking forward to the show and all of this stuff. I think um, um, it's going to be a good one. There's a lot of things trending. Lots of videos out there about LEC. So the, the LEC thing continues to trend. Um, on the situation there, so we'll see. Thank you very much, uh, Glendy. That's what you say. Okay, yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, I want to just start off by shouting a happy, happy birthday to Jewel Jones. This is from your darling wife, uh, Lydia Jones. She asked me to have a birthday, send her a birthday shout to you. So I, I pray that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I wanted to talk about, I know it's not true what we hear in the news about Burma Kamara wanting a new car. And I'm sure that I said, do who brought that information to us would say more about it. But I, there was something about the, the, um, the words that were underneath the headline. It says that he didn't want to use Twes car. And I was thinking, what if you don't want to use somebody else's car just because uh, you don't, your spirit just connect, just don't connect, or you don't know, you know, what's going on in the car? I mean, do you have an option in the government to just maybe switch car with somebody or maybe uh, have the car detailed and clean? Well, I, I don't know. I was just, I was just thinking about that. I can imagine me saying that, you know, I want uh, not a car that will cost too much or so much, maybe a car that will cost less than, but um, I can imagine myself saying, I just don't like the energy of somebody who was driving a car. Can I just get a different car? So I was wondering about that. 
question would be why we buy anybody car to begin with. That's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. Do I do you have anything? Yeah, my say, intro, you intro? know. Yeah, it's just a very brief intro. I want to say this. Sometimes, you know, Stanton will say, don't listen to people in the thread, but Stanton, you cannot miss an opportunity to make things clear and possibly educate. When I say, though, if this is true, it does not return a vehicle. It costs lives. You are not killing people. Government is about service delivery. Every time you take resources from government, you are actually affecting poorer people and it costs lives. This is not an exaggeration. If the health ministry is supposed to get $2 million in Bapalu County and the health ministry gets $100,000, it costs lives. I know you don't see the correlation. You think it's a far-fetched argument. But I want you to look at the bigger picture. When the American uh, ambassador, McCarthy, went around the country, he spoke about the hospitals across the country, even though there were budgets being allocated in, in the national budget. The hospitals in its corners were not receiving the money. It was actually costing lives. People's lives are at stake. This is why, for me, the issue of governance, when I tell you it's not a child's play thing, this is what I mean. It's not something we just say because we want to say. They are all interlinked. They are interlinked. Pay the man, pay him his benefits, let him purchase his own vehicles. He will take care of them. This country does not have that kind of money to be buying vehicles for people. Buy a vehicle for the police. Buy it for the soldiers. Buy ambulances across this country. And let's truly the killer to the Liberian people. This is where it matters. If you don't understand that correlation, I cannot help you. Stanton. Thank you very much, my friend. Minister, our uh, former deputy, Minister of Youth and Sport, as a well, thank you. It's nice to be back on as always. You know, great to see everyone. Much here, good to see you. I usually call you my we're, we're getting a bad we got a little bad feed from your end, Isaac. No, no, it's you not got, me. It's you not got, me. You got a fan on? Dr. Richardson, can you mute? No, no, no. Can, can we all mute and see? Try again, Isaac. Yeah, it's not, it's not me. Right, okay. Well, no, I, I I said hi to everyone. It's always good to be back and uh I was specifically speaking to Maxwell, someone that I call a seasoned diplomat, who some of us look up for things that happen in the diplomatic world. It's nice to be back on. Um, another day with a lot of things happening in our country, Liberia. A lot of them not being so good, but we are always hopeful that better will come, uh, though we are not sure when the better will come. I was driving in, I was listening to uh, Stunter, who I know very well. Unfortunately, a lot of people who didn't know him, but it's good when you come on the national platform that has thousands of persons listening. And you want to, you know, uh, I don't like going back and forth with something that the person saying it knows is it, it does not have a place on earth. But for the sake of our people, it's good we speak to that. I know, Sandra, you were talking. You were talking about a car, a vehicle issue. Let me say on Spoon Talk today is uh, is the. We just want your the... intro. We want your intro. We're no, 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 no. It was no, when, when, when I started yeah, with you. Can you give no, me no, your no, intro no, no, and no. we come back no, on it? Actually, I'm not too well. I may not be here forever, but I just wanted to say, I Let's got see, you run, you I got away. a I got a point in government March 5, from March 5 to the time I left God's story 22, government of Liberia has never, ever on a school assigned a government vehicle. And I know you call me today because we talk almost all of the time, more than 100 times a day. So it was one yeah. of those discussions and you brought that up. And I told you, I thought you were joking, your, your real same thing. And I told you, if government of Liberia thinks I owe their car, they didn't come to my house, I can show you my address and take any car. As a matter of fact, Tomorrow, I'll be going to town driving. When I'm going, I'll call you on the video so that when I reach to the police checkpoint, you can call them to come and get the car. Well, you and I know that uh, I've never owned a government vehicle. Government, I've never assigned a vehicle. And that's something I think is right. Anything other than that, I'm not going back and forth, but you know, it's not true. But okay, so let's just get something straight. Seriously, I said, no, well, I'm not, I'm not answering the back and forth. I just said, never ever been assigned a government vehicle, period. GSA is the one responsible to get government vehicle. I have my house. I got my number. GSA, me anytime, if you take my car, I got, or I got government car, GSA will come after it. Not on the show. And like I said again, on the record, I have never, ever, ever underscore capital letter 
being assigned a government vehicle. Never, ever, period. I'm not going back and forth with it. Thank you. So you can discuss it any way you want to discuss it. That, that's okay. But I'm not responding to anything. Again, we, we wish you well, Isido. Uh, you say you're you. not too well. Uh, sometimes malaria can come when it's too hot, plus four, plus five. It begin to make yeah, it. Especially when you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking for yourself too much. So, <laughs> so, so, but again, we want to say thank you. But I disagree with you. Uh, I have a couple of questions that you have to answer. That, that, and that's okay. And we established this because a lot of people want to know, I said, though, why you were at you youth and sport ministry. Have you ever driven? Have you ever had in your possession one of the ministry vehicle? Well, what kind of a question is that? I want to, I work, I've, I've even driven in a minister's car. I've even driven in a minister to a car. So what kind of question you got? Like I told you, from March have 5th to ever, January 22nd, I have never, I ever, know. ever on a school been a government vehicle. Yeah, but let's take it. Any other not, you asked me the question. <laughs> the question you asked me if I know when I was a government vehicle. Let's go one at a time. I see. I see. I see. I beg you. Let me fill in, then we'll go to Eduardo on this one. We're trying to save your name. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I just came on the national video and I told you exactly what it is. Easy, Isaac, I said, were you ever question uh, about having in your possession one of the ministry vehicle? Okay, let me repeat. Maybe you didn't know it. From were you the ever day, uh, from you the ever day I appointed me from March 5th to January 22nd, I have never, capital letter, Italy on a school, ever, ever, never been assigned a government vehicle. Were you I ever questioned? Ever, were you mean, ever questioned? I were you have ever never, questioned? ever, ever, never. I use my personal vehicle, and you know that. Maru. So, whoever for you to take that. I know. You and my son are living together. <laughs> what do you mean? I know no, that? we're wasting our time. We got a lot of things to discuss for our country. That's you know, this is important, Blaine. This is not a joke. It is. I mean, it's important. I said, Joe, refusing to answer my question because. You ran a propaganda to win at the national. We don't think you will run propaganda to lead the Labyrinth people. It's okay for you to run propaganda in everything else, but the truth is we must go to the things that matter in our country. As a do former the minister on radio on record is telling you he has never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever been a son of people. Thank you. Let's move on. Let's Thank move you, on. Let me say this. Look, Everybody stay down. Listen to me. Question. I said, hold on. I'm not asking you the question. Say, no, this is what people do. They assign the vehicle to the ministry, not to the individual. But what the individual get, they say, they didn't assign, they never assign a vehicle, but they get a ministry's vehicle. Ask the question in that direction. Has he, is it not exactly so? That's vehicle? not what I know. No. Are you, have you driven, have you been in possession of a vehicle assigned to the ministry, even though it's one of the ministry's well, name that is in your possession? The question you're asking is a little interesting. I was a deputy minister. Why would I drive? Why would I get in a government vehicle? I've got a government vehicle. I was trying to make this thing the very simple way for us to come to some understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Because this concern in Liberia, let's be serious. I'm going to call the Minister of Youth and Sport destined or whether he's been confirmed yet i hope so or uh, councillor Ko bangalow all right and he will speak to this for us to set this thing to say whether my sources were right or whether as it do is right minister Ko bangalow welcome to spoon talk again thank you for joining us sir hmm. thank you thank you Stanton. thank you so much all right uh, i received information today uh Concerning uh, Minister Doe, the former Deputy Minister, uh, someone reached out to me and said, do you know that Minister Doe still possess uh, the youth and sport, one of their vehicles? Uh, I, I felt that it was important because Minister Doe is my friend and he appeared on Spoon Tour. Let me reach out to him. I reached out to Minister Doe, but he gave me a different story and I wanted him to explain today, but he said, you know, can you... you can you tell us whether my sources were right? Does Minister Doe still in does I mean, the vehicle of youth and sport, whether it was our donor vehicle or the ministry vehicle, 
Does he still possess that vehicle up to today? Well, yeah, Stephen, thank you so much. Uh, really, since I took over, I've been reviewing a lot of reports and documents. And one of the reports presented me over the past 48 hours is the report of the Internal Audit Agency personnel at the ministry. Uh, his own personnel and fixed assets. And that report has it clearly spelled out that Minister Isaac Doe is in possession of the Halo's pickup that is assigned to the Public Relations Office. And uh, former Minister Peter Bima is also in possession of one of the ministry's vehicles. And so we have communications already that we have prepared to be sent to both Mayor, Mr. Doe and Mr. Bima to kindly return the ministry's vehicles. As the ministry does not have running vehicles, and we are expecting the deputy and assistant ministers to be appointed very shortly. Now, and so, now yes, go, I will be in a darkness. Tell you, I will be in a darkness. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Bangalo. Yes, yeah, so you are correct. I don't know how you got the information, but yes, you are correct. The Internal Audit Agency report captures that Mr. Doe has the pickup, the Halo's pickup that is assigned to the Public Relations Office. So, Duala, let me come to you. Forget the fact that minister are own vehicle, but uh, this is the minister now speaking, according to the document, Glenny, that reaches in Conor Gray, Prince Maxwell, as it though is still in possession of the vehicle. So my sources were right. So my question to the minister, does the government normally assign the vehicle to the individual or does the government assign the vehicle to the ministry? before we send it over to the individual? Well, there are some vehicles that are assigned to individuals, like some ministers and, and, and deputies, and there are some assigned to departments. So uh, the, the report doesn't say this vehicle was assigned to Minister Doe. It says it was assigned to the Public Relations Office but he took it to use, and he's still in possession okay. of the vehicle. Thank you. Glenny, you hear what you're hearing now, Glenny? I mean, I, I, I really admire this moment. <laughs> the check and balance is, 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 is extremely top-notch, that we're able to have the minister on who can come and clarify what needs to happen, if, whether the vehicle was assigned to Isaac Doe or was assigned to a de department that he worked with, he no longer works for the government of Liberia. He needs to turn over the vehicle. The minister has said there, there's already communication that is being prepared to send out to them to re return it. Let's also let's all of us be careful as we continue to point fingers at others. There are so many fingers that will point at us. So in this whole international space now, the minister himself has come and affirmed that yes. There is a vehicle that's in the possession of Isaac Doe that belongs to the Ministry of Youth and Sports that must be returned. I mean, there's nothing more I can say. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. Yeah, um, well, Isaac Doe, you heard what the minister said. It would be helpful for you to come and clear your name as you have helped uh, this government, Mr. Buckeyes, President Buckeyes, government accountable. So it would be good for you to come and clear your name. I just want the minister to respond to something if he can. Is it is he in favor of these uh, issuing of vehicles to government employees? I, I think we're there's a consensus that we're not in favor of that. Uh, I didn't get that question. Are you in favor of issuing government vehicle to? a government employee or, or employees of the ministry, there's a consensus that uh, people should buy their own vehicle and, and, and drive it to work. Why we, we strut up money, why are we giving our own vehicle 
to people to use? So um, I know that the policy is such that uh, vehicles are procured, I'm talking about the, 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 the fleet management policy of the GSA, is such that vehicles are procured for especially presidential appointees and it is with them for a period of time, I think three years, and then uh, they can be eligible to even uh, pay for the vehicle based on assessment. So I know, I think that's the fleet management policy. I used to work at the GSA uh, prior to, to 2018 as Deputy Director General. And what I know we put in place was a fleet of vehicles or fleet of vehicles were purchased, I think up to 15 and were parked at GSA for every functionary of government to use. You could come, sign on, and the driver and the vehicle will be assigned to you. All you do as a land ministry is to pay perhaps the GSA and the fuel, uh, and then the car will be assigned to you. So in that case, it was, it was uh, a practice that was intended to stop purchasing vehicle for just everybody. So we have a pool of vehicles. I just hope that can be reintroduced uh, so that you don't have everybody owning a vehicle. But I think the current practice has been that uh, government officials, especially senior government officials, uh, are assigned vehicles. But interestingly, not every line ministry has had the number of vehicles compared to others. So, for example, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, where him, uh, there is just one vehicle that is running. And that vehicle is the vehicle I inherited from Mr. Zioga Wilson. And so that's the vehicle, that's the only vehicle. Today we had to go on the multi-sectorial uh, visitation at the Youth Agriculture Training Center in Bensonville. Mm -hmm. And we, we we managed to 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 sort of take one of the old vehicles to 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 convey other employees. It was a disaster. Okay. Uh, it was a disaster. I mean, we're in the convoy. In fact, we had to leave that vehicle way up here, smoking and everything. So there's mm -hmm. no vehicle there. So when the internal auditors brought the report to me, saying that there are two good vehicles, fairly good vehicles. But they are still in possession of two of the former deputy ministers. And I saw one assigned, was, I mean, one is in possession of my friend and brother Isaac Doe, and uh, another one to former deputy minister Peter Bima. We prepared the communication immediately in a civil manner uh, to be sent out tomorrow morning to ask them to kindly bring the vehicle. And if Isaac says he doesn't have, the vehicle, I mean, I'm inviting you to come to my office tomorrow morning. The internal audit and the asset management people will be available to engage him right in my presence. Oh, wow. So, as the door is reconnecting, let me bring in Prince Maxwell and Colonel A. Remy Gray. Prince? Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I have a different take on this. First and yeah, foremost, let's go back. I heard, I heard that uh, vehicles are assigned to individuals. I just want to make that correction because from a standpoint of public policy, vehicles are not assigned to individuals, vehicles are assigned to the position. The position carries the privileges, the privileges that is assigned. Yeah, so, and that's the reason why we can take it back. Well, let, let, let him speak, might as well get given a chance. He's, he's trying to buttress you, you, what you, you said. May, you, you may be correct. So to the office of the deputy minister, yeah. So it's assigned to the office of the deputy minister. Why is actually exactly. being used by the head of that, the head of that department? They I, I, mostly uh, use that vehicle. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Minister, and thank you for bringing it up. Uh, on the issue of of uh, uh, former minister, former deputy minister Doe. I mean, we've been on this network for a while now. I do see him as an intelligent man. I do have a high level of respect for him. And I see that even with him being on a fire right now in a hot seat, he has still maintained his appearance on Spoon TV. 
So I'm very sure that uh, former Deputy Minister Isaac Doe will be doing the right thing for Liberian people. He will be giving the vehicle back if there is one based on the minister's uh, current information being provided. I hope that Isaac, you would do that because as much as we try to hold other people accountable, the Liberian public is also holding Spoon TV panelists accountable for their actions in Addis as well. And you now producing the car to them could put Spoon TV in a very uh, panelist in a very fluid position when it comes to accountability. And I don't think that we want to be in that position as well. So I will, I will urge you to please address this with the Ministry of, of, of Youth and Sports so that you can produce the evidence to strengthen that this car in question has been returned or, the, or whatever has been clarified so that Spoon TV audience can know that we hold hard to our accountability standards that we try to set for other people as well. Thank you, Prince. Colonel Gray, before we bring in Isaac, though, Colonel Gray, you go last. We we'll still have the minister on, by the way, if you have questions. All right. So, um, so I think it was uh, Louis Fourteen of France. I think I stand there if you can mute. Maybe we'll get. I'm I'm getting feedback, but it was Louis Fourteen of France that says. Um, can I mute? The minister is on the phone. Oh yes, yeah, sorry about that. It says, uh, um, I am the state. In other words, he's an embodiment of the state. The minister and, and also the, the individual who is minister, they are one and the same person. So Louis XIV said, le, le tat se moi, I am the state. The president of the Republic of, of, of Liberia is also Joseph Baca. So they are one and the same people. I'm making that analogy because uh, the minister assigned to that vehicle is also the individual Isaac Doe at that time. But one of the things I don't like about the the, the late government uh, of Mr. Mr. Weir is the is that their struggle with the truth. Just to speak the truth for them is, is a big struggle. I remember when Isaac um, had a struggle with um, domestic violence, he denied it. And this is the similar way he's denying the situation right now. I, I, you know, I don't want to take on him on this, but I don't think I mean, uh, 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 Kobe will come here lying to us. Just speak the truth. It will, it will set you free. You know, to come here and say, I don't have the vehicle. That government will, 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 will replace. They struggle so much with this lying situation. They lie every inch of the world. Up to now, they still lie. Uh, I mean, it's left for this um, Isaac Doe to tell us exactly his land possession of the vehicle. But I talk about uh, unfortunate mechanism. Okay. Was that transport? I mean, was that DSA? What is the enforcement mechanism? Why not go to go to the minister office and get the vehicle? Go get it. Uh, so, Minister Bangalore, you heard what uh, Colonel Gray said. Why not just go over to the minister house for the vehicle? Well, uh, Stanton is a former government official, and we decided to pursue the civil means initially. I know it's the general services agency that we should we should forward this complaint to, which could follow. But I strongly believe these gentlemen will will do the honourable thing and will return the vehicle. So, like I said. If his claim is he doesn't have it, I am inviting him to my office tomorrow morning. So please come. And then we can sit and talk about it. But the report is in black and white. It is on my diet. From the independent internal auditors that are assigned at the ministry. So but the report is that these two officials have these vehicles. And so we wanted to kind of return the vehicles. Let me ask you a question before we bring in Asado. He's back on the show. You know, again, folks, Asado, we are from a long place, but it's, it's so beautiful that we started this conversation. And the reason why I actually, I've been, listen, this story been like almost two, three weeks since they said Asado uh, had this vehicle. The reason I couldn't believe it, those of you that listen to me, because I know Asado. 
and I know what he went through because of transportation. I'm not going to explain it. Secondly, uh, I believe it was fitting. Once Acido went after Boma Kamara, to say that Boma Kamara buying vehicle for 120000 then I said, well, I get reason now to bring up this conversation. How can you look at Boma Kamara that driving his own personal vehicle? I can say that today. Because I call Boma and I call folks around him just to be sure. Dwalo, you asked me, my man, how are you looking through when you came on the show? I was talking to Boma. I had to put myself on mute. I sent him the, the, the newspaper allegation that he's buying a vehicle for 120. So let's be fair, folks. How can you talk about Boma having a vehicle for 120 and you still get a government vehicle in your possession? That's the reason the story came up. So I beg you, consider consider Bangalore, uh, Minister of Youth and Sport. We will just give Asi the chance to now get into the story, though he said he's not explaining anything further. Now you heard from the minister or former deputy minister, though. You have anything else to say? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And before I go to the minister, let me directly address Conor Roman Gray. Conor Gray, my character and your character are in different distinct capability. Unlike you, who formed part of warring factions that killed people during the war, including shooting at a church to kill three Catholic norms. I've never part of those. I've had impeccable character over the years. And I will warn you that this will be the last time you talk things that you know nothing about. I will come after you if you ever do. Thank you. So minister, let me let me come to you directly. And I know we spoke on the phone, you and I are talking to you. We also spoke through text messages, but let me publicly say congratulations to you. And before I ask you just one or two questions I have, let me state on the record that from March 5 to January 22, Isaac Endo, former deputy minister of youth and sports or his office, has never ever been assigned a government vehicle, and he is not in possession of a government vehicle any any day, anywhere, anytime. Uh, Minister, when last did you speak with your asset manager? Your asset manager, when last day did you speak with him? So, so Isaac, uh, yeah. I, 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 do have, I do have regular meetings every morning uh, between 8 to 9 o'clock. So this morning, the asset manager was in my office and he confirmed the auditor's report that you are in possession the vehicle that was assigned to the public relations office. Okay. Well, I just want to ask of you, Minister, because um, it is different. While we're talking, you know, school is monitor. While we were talking, uh, someone listened to the conversation and called me to tell me, but your very same asset manager called them about, I don't know which vehicle you're talking about, actually, but let me assume is the YOP vehicle. And the person just told me, just, just, just now, that your very same asset manager called them about the vehicle. And the person told your asset manager that, my man, you know what the vehicle is. So if you think you really want a video, go, go and get it. The person told your asset manager. So I want to beg you, can they call him up here, ask him, and tomorrow you can call Stanton to tell him the real truth. But again, like I said, I have never, ever, never been a standard government vehicle. I don't have one. Oh, yes, I've driven in government vehicle. I've used government vehicle, but to be a sound one for more than one month, two months, never, ever, never. So whatever report it is, it is incorrect. There was some mistake, error somewhere. Can you speak with your asset manager again? He will tell you the truth. And I would really appreciate when you to call Stanton and tell him the real exact truth. And we can go on. But for me, I'm not angry, I'm cool, I'm always very well. Just that I never get angry so easily especially when I know something is wrong, fake, and not true, I'm very okay. Thank you. So, 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 so Isaac. Yes, uh, sir. This, 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 is just, this is just beyond the asset manager because the auditors also validate what the managers say and do. So, no. uh, internal audit people did the audit and then they came out and there was no other minister, any other official who was listed in their report. I said both Minister Doe and Minister Bima were listed. And, you know, it, it is before me. And when we called the asset manager, his, his, his report 
corroborated the report of the IEE. So the internal audit agency people are independent people, you know them. And so it is their report that I am quoting. They said right. you are so, Mr. Minister, I, I don't want to cut you off. I'm sorry, but I guess sorry, sorry, Minister, I don't want to cut you off. It's not a back and forth. This is my last comment, I promise you, but I just want to say the internal auditors, they take the report given them by the asset to go ahead. But let me tell you, one of the things internal auditor will do is to verify with physical eyes on the report given them. And on this public manner, no internal auditor in the Republic of Liberia have ever called me, have ever come to me for a vehicle, have ever verified a vehicle of me, and can it? Ask them to give you any document, any document that has a vehicle assigned to me or my office or anyone in my office. I can tell you again, Minister, it is an error. It is inaccurate. It is fake. It is not true. I have never been assigned a vehicle. I don't have one. Your asset manager knows where that vehicle is. He spoke with the person who was controlling the vehicle. He knows it. Uh, Minister, if you see me driving a government vehicle for one week, I don't deny it. But to just assume that because you saw me in a vehicle for one week means it's a sound to me, I thought it's the worst thing to ever do in a job. And I will tell you again, Peter Bayman, just to end, Peter Bayman, that I know, Peter Bayman, that I know, legally purchased the vehicle that was with him. I was right there when Peter Bayman gave all his documents from DFA to the asset guys. So probably they were over busy, they were really looking at things. I'm telling you, I'm not Peter Bayman to defend him, but I know because I was there. He legally purchased his vehicle because the five years had elapsed. He purchased it through the administrative process. GSA gave him clearance, and that's the real truth. So it is unfortunate for our folks who all had a very good re relationship in our back to be spreading lies and part of fake news on things. These things are not okay. And I can only tell you that Rary Nimmer has been a very good man to me, a big brother. We spoke the same dialect. We always speak that. But his report is inaccurate. It is fake. And he knows exactly what the vehicle is. And I will tell you, I want to encourage you to take a legal step. If you can suppose or anybody believes after though had a vehicle in your possession, please go to court. I want to beg you to go to any court. I'm in Liberia. I'm not going anywhere. And if you win the court case, you can probably get for 100 years. It is fake. It is inaccurate. It's wrong. And such a thing should not be happening. This is a public space. You don't come and damage people's character when you know what you say is not right. We we serve government. Sometimes we roll on motorbike. We roll on tech care. We didn't complain. So nobody should come here to bring on news that they know isn't right. If you are an internal auditor, you verify. Please tell your internal auditors to show you one, one document that has as a door or his office or any staff on it. Start on coming today, and I was jo jo joking about it. But this has to stop. If this is the way the new government wants to go, wish hunting people for fake news, we all can stand by that. But those are incorrect. Please tell your internal auditor and asset people they know exactly where their car is. I've never held a car in the first place. Is a I know steering car. I don't drive a steering car. Tell them from the day I came from America, I have had my own personal car until I left government. So that report is in. Whoever told it to is a bloody liar and the person to be ashamed of themselves. And so that's Mr. what I'll say. So, but I beg you, I know you got I know you gotta run, Minister, Mr. Bangado. I know you gotta run, but I beg you. Just just take the one question from me, Minister. And the question going to Minister Do, I beg you. Minister Do, do you know where the vehicle in question is? I don't know. The asset manager knows. I don't know. Someone just called me who so lost the question. bill. No, no, it's okay. You say you don't know. know. It's my last 100%. question. Yeah, but let's take it easy now. We got to, we got to, I'm begging you, my brother. I, I'm asking you again. This vehicle that is in question, where in your possession uh, before taking it to the last stop? One million percent no. Is it, true that this, is it true that this vehicle is in the garage? In a mechanic I mean, shop? So it's in the garage. How do I know? And besides, why would then someone say it's in your possession prior to taking it in the mechanic shop? 
was it in your possession? He couldn't shave gear. So the the question is, who took it to the ma ma mechanic shop? Was it in your possession? And you guys took it to the mechanic shop before Co Bangalore and his team took I over. I just told you. I just gave you your answer, and I don't. I had to get angry. I don't want to get. The question is, who took it to the mechanic shop? All right. So so Minister so Bangalore. Why is it in your possession? Oh, I guess government vehicle. Minister Bangalore, go ahead. In fact, you just said the government don't have the vehicle. So why would I be doing do, do with it? Oh. Are you saying the asset manager oh. does not know that a vehicle for you can post went in a garage? So let's, Is let's, the key let's with listen. me? Let's listen to yes. Minister oh. Paul Bangalore. Go, go, go ahead, ahead, Minister. So uh, disappointedly, uh, Isaac, your inference about which home I think that just trash politics. I don't think we should delve into that. You you know us the better, man. Look, there are transparency institutions that were set up. One of such one, one of such is the Internal Audit Agency. It is their report that we consider. So if you are saying we should consider statements from you who have been accused and dismissed the report of these transparency institutions, then there's no reason why they should be set up. I have said to you, I have been quoting a report that is on my desk from the Internal Audit Agency. They did not name any other ministers. They named you as one of those in possession of, and they described the vehicle with the VIN number, the serial number, the color and the make and the office it was assigned to. A white pickup, he looks assigned to the public relations office. I did not say the government assigned you a vehicle and you, 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 you have it in your possession. I said it was assigned to the public relations office and I think you took it to use, but it was not returned. And so Isaac, that is a public office. I am asking you to do the honorable thing. Come to my office and let's try this out. I'm inviting you, but the report is there. I'll be there, I'll be there, there tomorrow. <laughs> so as I'll be there tomorrow. So Minister, why as you have asked, I have agreed now. I'll be there you'll be there tomorrow. Let me ask you a question. Down. Well, let us talk about Bima, though he's not here. I also just said that Bima purchased his vehicle. Did you yes, receive any did. information that the vehicle Bima now owned, it was purchased through that ministry? So, so if it was it was purchased and the asset manager is unaware and the and the internal auditors are unaware, then perhaps that's their issue. That's the issue of the auditors. But as far as they concerned, this vehicle was still owned by the ministry and was in possession of the minister. So he has to come also and see how he can provide clarity yeah. on how the disposal was done. Because there's a disposal committee always set up by the ministry and I'm sure the internal auditors and the asset management team will be part of that kind of process. But for them to affix their signatures to a document that says these vehicles were still owned by the ministry and are in possession of these ministers, then it gives reason for them to come to me kindly to provide clarity so that we can know where the truth lies. But as far as I'm concerned, we, all of us, we take the reports auditors that are very independent to be the reports to rely on. And so I'm not going to rely on statements from any individual. No. Thank you I'm very much, Minister. Of the internal auditors. Minister Ko Bangalo want to say, Councillor, Councillor Ko Bangalo want to say thank you very much for joining Spoon. Very thank first time since you took over. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Standard. Thank you, you so you, much. You're welcome, Chief. You're welcome. All right. So let, let, let's do the talking in house. To, a lot of stuff happening. We'll, we'll leave this story pretty soon because we got an important issue. Dr. Richardson, we have asked to do. And folks, let's just stick to this conversation, please. It will do us justice. Uh, as a doe in owning a vehicle, I, my sources told me, let me explain this story. I didn't tell as a doe that the vehicle was in as a doe possession clinic, right? And the vehicle couldn't shift gear. It couldn't leave from one to two. Your guy can drive shift. 
right? So you got to pull it into if you want to drive. That was a bad vehicle, by the way. It broke down. It was taken to the mechanic shop. And it is still at the mechanic shop. But on document, it was in the possession of Isaac Doe. Okay? On document. So they are saying, then bring our vehicle. But my thing is that Isaac Doe, you know the vehicle is in the mechanic shop. Tell us, listen, man. You know the vehicle went to the mechanic shop. You know where we usually take the ministry vehicles. So why should we go up and down? Uh, you know, and, and, and that's the, but it's not my business to say this to the minister Kobangalo, but that's the story that out there. So I think somebody is making sense. And it, thank you for saying that you will go to his office, sit with him, and you will discuss it and find a solution. I think that's the best thing. Dr. Richardson? This story is, is concerning, you know, I say is saying that he did not, you know, own the vehicle. The minister, the newly elected vehicle is saying that on paper. Let me add, they say I said sold the vehicle to the mechanic folks for spare parts. Well, Let me I add that. Well, okay, I didn't get all of that part, but uh, the newly appointed <laughs> minister is saying that on paper, I say had the vehicle. And he, I guess, never returned it. But the concern is, you know, is this how inventory is done uh, regarding the government's property? If this is how the inventory is done, this is very concerning because you never know where the property is. Like we hear now that it's in the mechanic shop, but uh, it, it's just all over the place. Just It has to be uh, cleared out. It has to be taken care of. There has to be a straight, appropriate documentation uh, occur when it comes to the government vehicle. Another thing about, and I know you want us to stick on the story, but it was embedded in this story. After five years, you can purchase the government property. I think that's what you said, Isaac. After five years, you use the car for five years, you own, you own it. You know, I don't want to be hundred percent definite, but I really think so because the GSA folks can speak to that. Either five or ten, I'm not quite sure, but after a certain time, it is. George to have her. Uh, well, uh, uh, complaining about money, complaining about resources. I, I believe that we should look into that route as well. I, it, 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 it seems like a waste for me. We're going to new GSA. You're making a group on a lot of people kind of angry because after five years with a brand new vehicle, trust me, if you purchase the vehicle for the 50000 after five years, you can even get 30000 out of it because it's still new. But in Liberia, they say you can go by and now the question well, about I'm not 100 percent sure of the years, but the only yeah, thing that I'm not right. right. thank you for that point. But let's stick to as a story about you know he sold it to the mechanic shop for spare parts. Glenny, what's your take? Now you heard from the minister, you are from Minister Bangado. So I don't I don't know about that other piece of the story. I mean, clearly we can say that wherever your story is coming from is it, we can assume that it's true based on what you heard because you nope, heard what it the here. minister said. Yeah, yeah, based on what the minister said, based on the audit. I think I think this issue will be addressed tomorrow when Isaac goes to the ministry. Isaac is vehemently saying that whatever the minister is saying, the auditor is saying is not true. But um, we will we will listen out tomorrow to hear the story. If it is true that the vehicle he was the last person that had the vehicle, then the minister and the audit is right to say that he has it, it's in his position. If it's on books that he signed for him and he was using it, I think it's on the possession. But there's something that he also said was, um, if people are doing audit and you have people in the building that have information, I'm sure the auditors are not doing audit in closure of the people that work in the ministry. They will ask for, there should be discovery on information so I'm sure whatever they told the auditors were how they went and did their work. But we'll wait for the story tomorrow. And if it's true that what Isaac is saying, then so then that would be the, uh, the, 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 the auditor will probably owe him an, an apology. If it is true that he still has the vehicle and it's in his possession, then he has to return it. It's, it's a clear cut case. Show up tomorrow, discuss it, and then we'll follow the story. Thank you very much, Glenn. The Prince Maxwell, I can confirm from my sources, the vehicle location right now is at the, if anybody know the McKenna shop that uh, the youth transport ministry usually get a vehicle for repairs, the vehicle there right now as we speak. 
right now i can confirm from my sources the vehicle is at that mechanic shop right now okay it been there forever it have been abandoned or trained seriously speaking i'm not kidding you you know uh and i think somebody just need to tell the new minister kobangado listen the vehicle is over there we either remove it or we just trash it because it's a piece of scrap right now talk to me friends i mean i i i do agree with you uh first and foremost uh isaac this is not a wish hunt I, I like the fact you threw that in to kind of spice the conversation up but i mean that's a softball i i, I would i do agree i will agree that this is an information overlap and that that information overlap can be resolved as you rightly put it and as the minister has rightly agreed the both of you can meet tomorrow because it is a good for the, it's, it's you know it's the, it, it, it becomes good for the general public it becomes good for the common good of spoon tv and its credibility because you are a panelist on spoon tv as well you will definitely be holding you to the uh, to the standard of you know, accountability and, and and honesty so resolving that will be a, a good thing for everyone. Um, I do think that this, the next step on this issue should be about digitization. Stuff like this should not be happening in this age. Right now, Liberia has programmers. There are programmers in Liberia that can be brought to the table and they can provide digital solution to this problem so that outgoing government officials on the issue of asset management or the issue of vehicle management or vehicle registration can be resolved going forward. These, this is not, this is not going to be Isaac cases. It's just a one case in a Again, box of cases. Here. Yeah, we, we were skipping you. Thank you, Maxwell. This is just one case in, the, in, a, in a, a long basket of cases that, we, that will be coming up as we go along. So to, in my opinion, to, to arrest this situation, People now need to move to the digitization process around asset management or vehicle registration from the government's perspective so that these things cannot be happening. When I was in Liberia, and I do agree with you, Stanton, there are many government cars that end up in garages around the country, different garages around the countries. They were just languishing there. Nobody cared about them because they couldn't move anymore. And these vehicles were not registered in the government system. We saw doing under, under uh, uh, President uh, Alan Johnson Salif government that the reform of the GSA, that was one component of the GSA that was strongly talked about to be reformed. And I think that process needs to continue. Now that we have digitization being very uh, of free, the, the, the education is there, the capacity is there, the ability is now in Liberia. We now have a uh, 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 strong internet system in the country. We should, we should promote that, we should advance our system in that direction so that such stuff can just stop. And we can have, you know, we can now have these kind of discussions about vehicle, where they are and, and, and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Gray. You know, one of the things I missed the talk about the administration for uh, was this Bureau of uh, Asset Acquisition. Uh, they have this bureau that was set up where um, in, as, in as far back as those, those years, we could trace government property. And one of the things I say, if, if, if I were in, in any, any defense uh, uh, initiative in Liberia, I would revive a full battalion of auto mechanics. You understand? And we buy that sector so that government will have to spend money on private, uh, um, you know, um, repair of vehicle or property. You know, but that's not that's for for for, for us to, to discuss later. But let me let me tell you, if the Republic of Liberia were to come under armed attack today, I will not pump out to go to uh, to Bujumbura camp. I will be fighting the border like Liberia to make sure I control an initiative that will prevent the state from being attacked. So when I joined the army in 1983 and up to the point I, I left out here, I was paid government salary, taxpayer money. If Isaac Doe wants to see that as joining uh, the rebel, that's his own initiative. He's a low man who does not understand what it means to be responsible when you're... Look, a friend of mine spent three years in jail 
and was dishonorably discharged for for not finding his job. You know the the army knife. He lost it, and he lost his job. He spent three years at at, at, at Belayala and was dishonorably discharged. Now, how much you can protect government assets, let alone an entire vehicle? This you say, I say, I think uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of flawlessness on the part of the government to protect its assets. You know, why could you say, you say, I say, uh, I, I like what we said. Why not digitalize some of these things this, this, this day and age? Why should one person come and say this? The other? No. I said, you, you can't threaten me. You're okay. I want you to put your way there and form a, a part of individual to come against me. You're just a low boy. You can scare me from the Republic of Liberia. You can, you can, you can make allegations as much as you like. If you aim aside now, it will be something else. I can tell you right now, you can't scare me. I'm a full grown uh, a man without any fear. Not a single fear in me. So if you want to bring it on, we'll go at each other on the show. No, not on the show. We'll, uh, we'll find a special program for you. You can yeah, put us on the show. Box. Anyway. Uh, let, let me bring ask the door. I have a ask the door. Go ahead, make a remark, then I can ask you my question. Yeah, right. But uh, before I move on, let me say, uh, Councillor Bangalore, I was not really referring to him. And again, sometimes the emotions are higher. But I know I've spoken with Councillor Bangalore. He sounded so very nice. We texted on WhatsApp, you know, offer him my willingness to help wherever. He needs and he's, he's embraced it, and I thought he's a good man. Uh, he's only acting based on the information he received. And in my mind, let Maxwell put it, it was just a little overlap of information. First of all, of us here know that if an auditor is doing an audit, the auditee will always have a response, meaning you will find whatever the problems are, you will send the person the query, then they will respond to that query. And I'm not sure any of those things were true at all because there was no audit carried on or anything. It was just yes, oh, that he got okay, that he put a name name. That's how it went, which I thought was very wrong. And like I said again, you know, Councillor Bangalore is a big brother, a boss, because I mean, he's taking the place of mine, but so he's a boss and I, and I always respect him that only that he was fed, you know, the wrong information. But I wanted to just uh, pick on something Santa you said. And let's look at it. You just confirmed that your sources, whoever that person is, just told you that this vehicle in question is at the garage where you and Spose can carry their car. Yes, Think I said that. I said Will it, it be as a door who will drive that car to the garage? How about every minute minutes, so I will not. You and I will agree that the asset people must have not not knowledge of it. So how come to them now, instead of them making it simple and say, oh, they can't the garage, what say he has the possession? Only that be very simple. Okay, maybe they, they will say the key with me. I mean, I don't, they know it's not right. So why don't make it simple? Well, it doesn't make sense that you have the car key and the car in the garage. Who took the car to the garage? Even if you That's ask your question. driver, if you ask your driver, That's you say, driver Stanton, Take this car to the garage, and you know you have given that authority for the car okay. to be taken to the garage. Oh, so on, you are still responsible, on. right? Yes, you just said that your source told you exactly what the car is. Your source is not my driver, meaning that person knows exactly what the car is. If that person did not know, like you are saying, I could tell my driver, okay, to the garage. So how did your source know that? It means that particular source. Just wants to stare up something, thinking that as a door is someone you can just come and eat over. No, 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 I got as a door, and what they are saying is that they are saying it was in possession. It was in possession prior to taking it, prior them taking it to the garage, sir. That is the thing now you keep missing, and I don't want to go into it, but I have said again that from March 5 to January 22, the governor of Liberia, anywhere. In youth and post, outside of youth and post, under youth and post, thus an iota of red where Azegdo name is attached to a vehicle. Never. 
And I mean, okay. that's just what you should know. And let's move on. Tomorrow I'll go to the Thank you very much for even being here. What was your, what's, I mean, you're moving around with this newspaper. This newspaper I got to show because that one, what? Of, what? you know, no, let me, let me show you now. Let me show you. You, you put this in our chat room, our global chat room, which is very, very, you know, informed. A lot of good people put good stuff in there. You know, and you brought this thing up and you said a lot about this something. Do you believe that minister, oh, that minister you Mama that Kamara, buying a vehicle, <laughs> a vehicle for $120,000? Do you believe that? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Minister Bwama Kamara, let me tell you, I'm no standard water spoon that you will ever know him. The picture he just brought is to bring you to the front. He will only twist it like he's asking, but it is you he wants to ask. Please tell the people if indeed you are buying any vehicle that is one of your I spoke to him. Not asking me. He's so not asking the people. <laughs> no, Granny, who put this in our chat room? Who wrote a lot about this in the chat room, <laughs> and you, Granny? And you, and you know. <laughs> Granny, who wrote a lot in the chat room about this? Uh, uh, I said don't. I said don't I mean, that. He shared it. And that's the reason why I bring it. And I called. Minister Bwama Kamara, and he says, stand on, I'm using my old car. My old car that I've been using, whenever I come to Liberia, that's what I'm using. I believe him. I believe him. But how can but, you share this? I don't make the newspaper. You can ask the newspaper that reported the story, not me. Even if I shared it, although you knew about it, that's okay. You didn't want to share it. You wrote a whole three paragraph. Yes. Behind it, behind <laughs> and that's a problem. I can read it. I can read it if you want me to. It, right. I'm quoting. <laughs> nobody wrote three paragraphs anywhere. <laughs> he just put a problem. Right. So let's <laughs> move on. So then we had a wonderful day at the one of the best hearing I've ever witnessed. Uh, uh, the director himself, uh, destined for Labrador Water and Sewer Corporation. I'd like to hear you guys' view on Mo Ali presentation today. That we reach you. If you follow the year in today, please speak to us. Or I think, I think it was beautiful. Let's just let's just discuss it real quick. What see um, you that? Yeah, I actually didn't get a chance to follow it, so I have no comment. Okay, Glendy, did you follow? So I already made some initial comments about it. I think um, Mo Ali did very well. I also think Mo Ali was well informed about the struggles and what's going on in Liberia concerning water and sewage. Um, and I and I was just, I was very proud, very proud of him to hear, because I think um, in short, I would like to say that that's his area. That's what he knows about. That's where he, ha that's where he has the experience in. So I think that pick for that area was was a good one. And I, I, and I can just wish him the absolute best. But all of the questions today he answered, um, and I think the I think the senators too were having a they were having a good time with him, and how and how um, he answered the question. So, kudos to him, wishing him the very best. Uh, Colonel Gray, Mo Ali presentation. Did you follow? You know, Santa, I did not follow, but um, regarding that sector, I've known um, Mo Ali for a while. Uh, even during the Madam Salif administration, this was uh, the area he chose to go. And what sand, water and sanitation was uh, one of the areas that um, he served so well during that, that administration. And, and people like him could tell exactly uh, the role of uh, water purification, um, you know, airborne diseases that uh, attack that sector of our country and, you know, and, and pollutants and so on and so forth. But the guy, the guy is, a, is an expert in the area and uh, he went to a good school in London or England uh, to acquire some of those skills and he has served the sector. So I, 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 I have no doubt. Uh, more guy all his ways, but um, this is his forte. And I hope um, it will serve it well, serve our nation. And we look forward to, you know, to, to his service. Prince Maxwell. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you're good, Prince. Okay, great. Uh, look, I, I, I had a, a, a bit of, of Moore's um, confirmation. I mean, what can I say about the guy? But, I mean, let, let me just take this further. 
Mo's confirmation today was not about Mo, Mo Ali. Let's be honest about it. Mo Ali confirmation and his articulation of the subject that he's about to inherit is more about the reflection of President Boykai and the young people he has encouraged around him for a while. We know that Mo Ali has been very close to the president over the years. He supported the president over the years. This goes to show that this is the reason why Ambassador, at the time, uh, Ambassador Boyka and now President Boyka has cultivated such young talent around him. I think Mo, Mo has shown this, that the judgment of the president was right in keeping him close and in nominating him for such position because over the years, he didn't just articulate the, that particular aspect of his intellect to the president, but also to make the Liberian people understand that President Boykai bestowing such trust, public trust on, on Mo is a good decision because over the years, Mo has articulated and has stood strong in that particular area. The thing I was looking for today in Mo's presentation was his passion, not his intellectual articulation of the subject matter, because anybody can go and just learn something, but do you have a passion in it? I think Mo has exhibited that. I think he showed that today, that he has enough passion. I was also looking for his vision. He showed that today because you need vision in order to implement stuff. You need to know what you are going into and how you want to make it happen. And I think he showed that today that he has a vision for that. I think he also showed his sense of leadership. He, I think he also showed that he understands the environment he's going to work in, the challenges in that environment, the, the actors in the environment, the people he needs to work with, his, his level of collaboration that he will need, his level of expectation that he would need, that he has to bring to bear to achieve his goals and vision collectively with the people. I think he showed that today to the Senate. So I think in so many ways, as a young uh, public uh, policy uh, implementer, he's definitely going to do a lot for himself, for the country, and for the president's uh, 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 trust that has been bestowed upon him. Thank you very much. I said no more Ali presentation today. Yeah, hey, um, nothing much to say. I wish Mo Ali all of the best. Again, I have always said on numerous occasions that since I was born, I have listened to, I have read, I have seen through Facebook videos and other videos, great speeches, sweet voice. If sweet voice could build a country, Liberia would be the best country on the planet. I listen to my brother Mo, I wish him best, and I'm sure he will do the best he can. Uh, basically, I, I, I don't get to take in much interest if someone is recounting the problems because we know the problem. So recounting the problems to me, do not really cut the shot. I want to hear solutions. If you come and say, like, don't feed themselves, we know. We want, I want to hear the solutions to doing that. You know, we know water is not flowing. We know, uh, you know, but again, I wish more all of the best. It's a challenged place. A lot of people will be looking at what he does. He's a young man. He represents the young people. And whenever he succeeds, you know, the entire generation of young people will be proud of his accomplishment. And so I will hope, you know, he opens up and uh, not act like his other friends. I want to bring the no more thing. He can reach out to his former colleagues, those who were there before, and get to get a little insight of how things are so that he can have, you know, a lot of space ahead of him to go forward. But in all, I think more particularly, he showed that he has knowledge in that sector, but I would love to hurt a lot of, you know, conditions, but let's hope he will do better. Thank you very much, I said, I think for my side of this, I think everybody said it, Mo Ali is very, very unique for the position. You know, he, he came into this appointment with such a huge and pleasant uh, credential when you talk about the position in which he was appointed to. Uh, I know he will be confirmed uh, because not only that the Senate agreed to confirm everyone that is sent by President Barker, <laughs> 
Mo Ali, Mo Ali. Yeah, they have agreed. But Mo Ali is on session because he, he missed the qualification. Uh, then again, let me say this. I, I, I'm feeling for Mo Ali, folks. I'm concerned about Mo Ali uh, because this government is a dry government. No money is coming in. It's a donor-funded uh, project. Most of what they do at uh, the Labron Water and Sewer Corporation. I'm looking, hearing Emmanuel Nukwe, Senator from Magibi County, asking Mo Ali, uh, you, you, you're you promising us that you bring water to Magibi. I'm hearing uh, Bill Twawe, who took all the money, the allegation that he broke the free port down, gave all the money to Joe Weah, and he said, I'm hearing that you bring water to Sester. You know, those, those different senators saying that you will bring water here, you will bring water, as if to say, Mo Ali will have water in his back if they do not pass the budget to support him. I mean, to me, they are setting Mo Ali up for failure. And that's a continual problem. Everybody say, bring water to my district, bring water to my uh, county. <laughs> but you should give him the money. You should give him the resources. Yeah, so it will be hard for Mo Ali. Who control the chemicals? The Lebanese. They say, we're not bringing it. Nobody will get water because there will be no mixture, nothing whatsoever. And those things are expensive. Right now, Mo Ali complaining. What he received, there are over 300 additional names on payroll. Somebody say 193, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. I said the government just put a lot of people on payroll before they leave. So is it bad to install the bill? But again, by there you go. We are not talking about your car issue, like, okay, the people car back. So the <laughs> issue here is that it's very concerning, <laughs> Prince Maxwell, for us to sit down. I said, well, not because I don't want to tell the real story about the car issue, or you leave me alone here. <laughs> I'll give you for now. Let me finish with that. Let me finish with that more at the issue because it's concerning, Prince. Yeah, we are right talking about water, clean drinking water, safe drinking water. Emmanuel Nukwe and Betua and all of them telling more at say, bring it to our you don't have to resources you don't have the water he will not bring it to your city he will not bring it to your county because you know why he doesn't have it that's a problem for our government today and this government is a dry government they're begging for 41 million dollars cdc saying no we're not giving you the money the only thing will give you that payroll 26 million and some of the money you're asking for the president or uh, 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 office can you imagine from 41 or 43 made on the say they will give them less. Keep the other one for the budget. I want us to discuss that. But everything that went through there, CDC people pass it for job we had. And all they're asking for, a little over under for the three million dollars to operate for the month of February. Glenny, this is an embarrassment. These guys that have made up the mind to cripple this government. Yeah, we done all the radio stations saying, yeah, the country, I agree. Burma Kamara should say $2 million for the president office. This is how we spend it. I agree. Take the $100,000 from there for that you say you're going to use on AFL. We didn't do the emphasis, the program. Question those things. But for you to call it to own it, salary, uh, it's a problem for Joseph Burger. And people think it's a joke. It's not a joke. These people used to go to build to our way and get money in the bag. To take out the Josh Manor, we have to run his operation. It won't happen with Jose Yiman Buaka. They used to go to cemetery. I said, do that at night. We go to cemetery and get money. Just what Josh we are. And all his many hooligans. And Joseph Buaka is doing it the right way. Go through the legislature to request for the $1.5 million that the people have a problem with it. This government is a dry government. From everywhere you will find yourself, you're on your own. And that's the problem I think Mo Ali is going through. If he doesn't come up with a plan to get more donor support, he will be in a serious, serious you know what. Lenny, you want to say something or is it Prince? Yes, me. Yeah, Prince, go ahead. Yeah, first of all, okay, I'll just say a few things. Uh, categorically, categorically say a few things. Number one, the, uh, the institution, the agency, Mo Ali is going in is under the it's, it's covered under the sustainable development goal. We we know that water and sanitation is a major part of that. 
So I hope that the Senate and Mo Ali are looking in that direction because there, 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 there are enough funding, the donor fund funding in that direction. It base is also based on the policy and your programs that you have lined up. If if those policies and programs are implementable and can achieve the goals and objectives of the government, then certainly the UNDP, USAID, and all of these in the UN will be willing to to bring to bring fundings to bear in that area. But you have to work hard to prove to them that uh, you, you can make that work. That's number one. Number two, on the issue of digitization, it is clear to me now, this is something we haven't spoken about on this network before. It is clear to me now that digitization should become part of our national security tool in the country. I see the government of the past, this government, I mean, the government before George We Are Government, people have been very weak on digitization. Now, to bring that further down to the real element of things I want to talk about in our area is cybersecurity policy. We need to start focusing on our cybersecurity policy in the country, in Liberia. Why do I say this? The world has moved. We have transitioned now to a, to a very fast world in terms of information dissemination in the digital space. And cybersecurity policy, whether it is cybersecurity uh, security policy or cyber policy, is very, very important. We have capacity now in Liberia. We have the human capacity. What I have not noticed of recent, over the years, is the government taking on the initiative of calling all those in Liberia who are Liberians that have gone to school, have gotten a master's degree, are now back in the country and are rendering services in whatever field, to call them to a collective meeting to have a general consensus of where to take the country going forward as it pertains to cybersecurity. If you look at across our entire government, all of our cybersecurity tools that are there are weak. They are very, very weak. If you look at government websites, they are all out of their non-existence or they are very, very weak. When you look at the back end of things, they are not even there. We have people in the country, Liberians, that now have master degrees, if possible, some PhDs, who the government can call as a collective and bring them around the table and ask them, how can we get this fixed? Because Liberia has been left behind and the margin of being left behind is growing exponentially. We need to reduce that gap. We cannot sit down and allow our cyber security infrastructure to not be built or to completely diminish. Our government will have a major problem. What are you looking at the public financial management system we're putting in place, asset management system we're putting in place, national management system of human capacity we're putting in place. It's going to be a problem if we do not address this. The Senate needs to take on this on a serious level and start to uh, make a discussion about this. Thank you, Prince. Dr. Richardson, you want to add to this? Well, we got to move to this other information as it will just share with me that they have demoted one Jadakian from the Ministry of Public Work. Uh, public work, uh, Mr. Avin uh, Jayine. On the 16th, this took place uh, because he didn't support Joseph Waka. But he have a letter over here, though. And I hope I can call Rodan uh, if you guys, I want us to just, also, you want to discuss this? We, and then I, I will see if we can get, if this is true, we need some clarity on it. Uh, I think it's in the chat room now. It's been shared in the chat room. Uh, I don't think it's the way it is that they've demoted him because he didn't support Jose Yuma Buarca. I want us to clear that myth. Uh, I think it's a talking point. But again, uh, what we wait for Asa to go through the letter. Glenn, you want to say something? Oh, you, you say something, Asa? I didn't hear you. Oh, well, you know, it, it's, I mean, it is in the chat room for everyone to see, but uh, not to go deep into that, Whenever you have a precedent on something, it becomes easier to point out to what had happened before. We were here at that very same public works. President Boakai nominated a fellow for, uh, I think, a deputy minister position. And in no time, there was a picture resurfacing of that fellow with a CDC hat, and he was recalled immediately. That alone tells you that it is right. 
once you've done or you did not support this president, he's not going to appoint you. Of all of the time the president came to power, this is a fair and just criticism. The president has not appointed anyone who did not support him. I am not saying anyone who didn't work in CDC government. Even if you have worked in CDC government and you supported him, he appoints you. But once you don't support the president, and I think that now is going into the ministries where we see people keep talking about dismissing people and mass. In my mind, all of those people are Liberians. This government came to power to do things differently. But if you want to walk on the path of dismissing people here and there, because you assume they are partisans from the CDC, I think you are doing Liberia no good. That's not what the people voted for. I thought they voted for living, they voted for improved insecurity, they voted for a lot of these things, and not to come and be dismissing people. Just to end very popular work, Mr. Giddings, I did not expect that for him. Our understanding is he has dismissed every single consultant that was there, Amongst them, though, were two gentlemen who were he pointed on Facebook who supported Mr. Bwaikai. His friends and him argued during the uh, elections that if Bwaikai, Mr. Bwaikai were to win, that would have happened. He said no, and now it happened. So his CDC friends were then voking him because of that. And I thought uh, it's no good for our country. That's not what the people expect of this government. I don't think that's it. So let me put a letter up. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, go, go. I want to put a letter out. Well, I wanted to say something also. This is when we have to be extremely cautious with allowing, um, and, and this is no disrespect to anybody, when Isidore is coming and making all these statements like it's true, we have to verify these things. A few days ago, Emma Glasgow, who is doing phenomenal at the fishery, there was also a story there that she terminated somebody because the person was voting for Boyka. So this is two sides of the aisle. Here it is, we have somebody who clearly support, supports George Weir, Samia Tua, and we're hearing that this is what she did. And now we're hearing I said those saying this. I think it, it leaves us with the balance to be able to verify those stories. I doubt if the Minister of Public Work will do that. And on one instance, I also want to add one, we also need to find out if this is true. We cannot come and just have Isido say this and accuse somebody of terminating people. We're all first calling Roland up and Roland is not somebody who if you pick up the phone to call won't answer. So I don't think we should go with this story and just hearing from Isido and what he's purporting because he is from the CDC side. And yeah, we but we're giving you the time to talk on that. it. You read the letter. Don't blame Isido talk. I'm not, I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying when he is saying, when he is saying, that this is what was done, then I'm also bringing up the story from the fishery that was all around and we now learn that it's not true. So we have to be able to balance it. I'm not, I'm not for so either you say, side. Yeah, yeah. I'm asking you now, what's your, only ask those one What's your own thing? You have read this letter. What do you think happening here? That's why I say call Roland and ask him. That's what you no, do. No, we'll call Roland, but you're yeah. part of this. Yeah, give your own opinion now. You read I don't this have any opinion on the letter because I don't. I, I cannot authenticate the letter. I have no opinion unless you call the, the public work minister to ask the him letter, the, the direct the, source. The letter is signed by Roland Guinness. It's, it's, um, it's and legit. Like, like I said, there are so many publications out there that wasn't so, even so true. You cannot, I said, we cannot wait for uh, you to do that before you gave an opinion. But as it is entitled to his opinion. Which is if fine. You cannot, if, you cannot, <laughs> if you cannot say as it do, I think you're wrong, S, Y, and Z, that's fine. But let me bring in uh, Conan Gray. Conan Gray, yes, the letter. Minister of Public Work. You know, uh, Stanton, when it comes to appointment, into position is the prerogative of the appointer, appointing authority. At least somewhere has been demoted. Under the CDC, nobody, unless you were a was ever appointed to anything that I know of. Um, so when we come here today, we were preaching equity. When we could not show equity to our fellow men yesterday, I'm not saying that the Nima, Joseph Nima, Baka administration should move forward uh, with uh, policies that were uh, carried out by Mr. Weir. But at least he got a job. 
they, they didn't kick him out. Mo Ali and others were kicked out of the system in spite of being expert in, the, in, in what they do. But they retain him there. That's a blessing. You know, why, why the noise? They want, they want a new administration to come and promote somebody that did not support their political cause. This is politics. That's how it goes. This is an appointing position, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stant, uh, Witherspoon. I, I think uh, they, they, they were generous to him to even keep him there. Yeah. CDC would not keep you there one second. You would have been gone out of there and go find something else to do. But uh, today people want people want Jesus Christ to come. <laughs> That's not how it works. That's politics. Uh, you have to live with the consequences of your choices yesterday. And so, therefore, I think uh, they did well for him. Why all the noise? Uh, what the noise for? He got a job, for God's sake. Others never had a job for six years with white people, looting our country, uh, um, you know, denigrating uh, other people that were there in the past. I'm not saying it was okay, but at least Mr. Giddens was, was gracious. Uh, this guy, I would have kicked him out. They ain't go. They ain't feel exactly. What they see the soul. They say, "What you sow, you shall reap." Can I tell you? I'm going to disagree with you. We cannot. Be, <laughs> we, we cannot be doing uh, an eye for an eye or tip for a tap. Okay. We don't want to go. I encourage this new government to not do what the old government did. However, I'm reading this letter, and maybe this is hearsay until I believe it is verified. Um, there's no, they said that he, they, who said that he was relieved because he was a poor, he didn't support poor guy. Who said that? That's it's not what I'm, I'm not seeing that in the letter. Well, you see it in the letter. Yeah, I'm not seeing because he had a different ideology or, or they just said, you know, that uh, they needed him to go for further training and to report to human resources and, uh, you know, until I, I know that when they're trying to, to get rid of you because they don't like you, they can come up with all kinds of administrative reasons. But I want to verify more of the sources that said that, I mean, he could be disgruntled. Uh, he could be saying the truth. Uh, he could be saying, uh, he could be mad that he's losing his job or he's getting a demotion so that he will say that, um, you know, I'm getting a demotion because uh, I support, I did not support Joseph Buckeye. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's tricky here. It's very tricky. But I wouldn't want this government to engage in, you know, not hiring people because that's what, uh, that, that's like, what I'm saying. But, but you know what? You know what? There were people who supported Joseph Barker that, that have not even gotten anything. This guy did not support him against something. Why was he making that for? I think I will just move on. No, so he was already in the system, right? Kind of great. Hmm? He was already in the system, I believe, right? Or I, I mean, it's a, that's why he's a technocrat. They, they just send him somewhere else where he can go and serve. That's yeah. how government works. Hey, well, well let, let's let, let's look at this. Let's look at it from the perspective that is clear to everyone. I think in librarian people. Number two, there are two positions here. Is this is this position a civil service career position or is it an appointed political position? Oh. Those are the fundamental questions you have to ask first. If it is a civil service career position, then the minister's position is absolutely right in that if a civil servant is not doing his job, that civil servant can be recalled from that position and reassigned and then retrained. That is possible. If it's a political appointed position, then I mean the minister is actually giving him an olive branch because the next step will be firing him, removing him from such position. That's what the people do understand. Let, 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 me, let me say something and welcome, Gisim. Uh, you know, you. You you as a very very you, you know whenever Fatimana on the show, you really focus in discussing the issue, Prince Maxwell. And let me say to our sister Fatima, she's bereaved. One of her niece passed away. Just she was able while coming on the show, and we wish the family well again. If you know Fatima, reach out to her. One of her niece uh, nieces passed away from uh, Europe, and uh, we pray that the family remain well. But let me get back to this conversation. It is important for us to discuss this. I think as a do, we use everything to gain political uh, 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 morale. 
And and I think you know when this kind of letter come up, look look, look at what they attach to the letter because he's a sedition. No, I agree with Abraham Gray here. It's not because he's a sedition. He's not alone. They're moving folks around. I just spoke to my sources. They are moving folks around at the ministry. Actually, Glenny to you. They're watching the show. They say, take Glenny, man. These things they are true. Nobody will make let write letter and say people doing this and that. So this well, is I still have key. a right to All say right? I want it so, authenticated so, though. So <laughs> the, the the issue, the issue that they are moving people around. They didn't fire him. But this was a surprise Liberian listened to us today. At that same ministry, a very strong sedition by the name of Edmund Lord, a very strong, he, be, he was campaigning for Joey, this girl's election. Guess what, Remy Gray, and you're a smart guy, you said it. The man, he was an engineer support staff in the assistant minister office. Right now, this guy is director for Zuni. The push it up there. When they review his, his document, understand that he have the technical know he's a very smart guy, he gets credential, they promote him. Of course. He's a sedition. He's on Facebook. He never had it. Now, it would be a bad thing for Unity Party people that I'm saying this, but he met the qualification and they promoted him, Glenny. He's a sedition just from Sitting in the assistant minister office as a support staff. Now the mayor is one of the directors for Zuni. So how can I sit doing all of this city and say Rolling Guinness is firing people? No. They recall them, they reassign them, they train them. They train them. Because this is the back end of this thing. I said do Gibson, Jerry, Jer those people that really don't like this government would be the talking point to say they fire Glenny because she's a sedition. They fire Glenny because she says she let Joseph work out. But can they also now elevate this government for promoting Edmund Law? Anybody that know Edmund? Giving him a director position? Let's come on, guys. I hope this satisfies the argument from the other people. These people know that the back is pushed to the wall, Colonel Gray. If they fire anyone to sedition, as they do, they will run on the voices, on the voice masses or masses voices, whatever that newspaper say, and they will create those lies. But I can call Edmund Lord, call him. He was promoted. And that's a big thing for this government. So when I said those say they hire one of our person, they hire one of our person. Now you have it. So so start out. I'll give me a minute here, please. Uh, but it's not your turn uh, to talk. Then you interrupt, uh, Granny Town. But I thought she was the first to have spoken on it. No, she uh, it. Again, with the power vested in me, a year and another two minutes to her. Okay, go, no problem. <laughs> you even <were> five. <laughs> 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 I mean, I already said it. I said what I said. Some of these things, right. when they come up, we have to make sure we know where it's coming from. I said, though, number one primary intent is to find every negative story that he can on the government, every propaganda that he can share, he will share. The president's trying to go to the to the, 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 the McKinney shop. He he so, he so said the government the the shop. A, Exactly what Prince said. It is within the purview of the minister to reshuffle people. That's his ministry. He can poke people around. And if he feels also that you're not competent or you, you don't meet the criteria for the position, he can also terminate you. But it's not right for us to continue having these stories. And then he said, oh, you want to be objective. You're not being objective. When you find the simplest thing to always come, and point out and make it seem like all oh, the Joseph Parker government is against it this year. Mr. Grispe, Grispe, who is the minister of state, was an ANC man. And he's still an ANC man. I was, he's still an ANC man. Yeah, he's from yeah. ANC, but he's in the government. But let, let us say this what about Doe firing? I mean, what about Joe? We're firing Joe. We don't want to make it look so. Go go ahead, uh, as you do it. We're bringing gifts in. Well, uh, so let's repeat what we said, and that has always been true and will always be true. Mr. Baikai has never appointed anybody to support him. 
the ANC did not go to the second round. So Mr. Sylvester or whatever what his name is, supported someone. And that person is not President Weir. That's the only reason why he was appointed. Let me repeat, President Weir I and mean, President Breitkart had not appointed anyone that didn't support him. Unlike President Weir, who appointed Mr. Breitkart's running mate in 2017, Emmanuel Nukwe, who appointed ANC's running mate in 2017, Mr. Uh, or the former ambassador, and all these people. But let's go to the world we're discussing. You know, my people, we are discussing politics here. We are not discussing church. This is not a pastoral network and bishop coming to preach the Bible. No. We know, everybody here knows how it works. Nobody can be put on a letter because you support President Breitkart. That's why we are, we carry up. But we know what they can do to target people who support or who did not support. We all know this is politics, is not church. And secondly, you know, truth is not defined as to how somebody sees it. Truth is relative as to who's saying it and who's be be believing it. When I come here, I don't say what Maxwell say is true, is not true. What my, Maxwell says, I come and say my own. And what is up to you to determine what I say is true or not? But again, let me say, let me say this. CEO, you will defend from now to 2029 and you will keep defending until your defense will finish. We are only asking this government to be Liberian enough, to be patriotic enough, and stop going after people they perceive as traditions. If you want to go on the moon to do any study, Please don't go there. Just look at the gentleman who they appointed as a deputy minister, and only because he wore the CDC picture, he was recorded in no time. I thought we were all talking about Liberia. Are we saying it is the new norm wherein somebody sees this person to be, you know, maybe a sedition? So because of that, they target the person and demote them and bring them here. We're talking about demotion. Every time we talk about LEC, you say the government just can't empower two days three days. But now they're taking decisions that affect the lives of people. It is okay now. I thought before you take such decision, there will be processes. It will go through, no, let me end quickly. It will go through performance appraisals and X, Y, Z. So how long has the government been in place for them to have determined exactly this man need there to be demoted? The government needs to start dismissing people out of their work and they need to stop targeting people who they perceive as addition, we are all Liberian, like President, we are dead, they should do the same. That's what we pass the government back. I said, what makes you think that this man was demoted because he was a sedition? Again, like I said, it is not a pastoral net network that I already said. This is no, I'm just, I'm It's a serious question I'm asking <laughs> you. You, you, because, you because, because uh -huh. the young man has been CDC from day one up to today. Again, I know, and it's true. I don't know what else more I can say. It, but again, if you call just, a minister, I just wanted to know after you have some other, some other, you know, maybe anecdotal so, evidence to well, say. Michael, yeah. Let me ask you: Why would you think the only people who today have been judged not to be good performers, the only people across all ministry, are sedition? Think about it. What do you, you are you saying? All of the UP people who are there, they all know both. I just, they I just all heard Sandra tell us. All of them. I just heard Sandra tell us that there was a guy. Who that had story. Had don't forget about that whole story in Turkey. But the That's reality is what you're saying. Let me give you a piece. I said, hold on, I said, I said, hold on, I beg you. Edmund Law is ready in the ministry. If Stent online, people can call him. He was promoted. But what become of Cooper Crown? What becomes of Samuel Do Jr.? What becomes of those that pledge their loyalty to Jose Yuma Boyka that you guys fire immediately when Cooper Crowd attended the program? Counselor Cry was dismissed. Akaris Grill asked for his immediate dismissal. Listen, guys, let me be serious. Government win, winning or election is very important. Everybody knows that it's very important for you to win. Not everybody in CDC will be part of this government, but this government will have sedition. George Weah did it. When he came to power, Gibson, 
he brought unity party folks with him. Those that were lawyer and those that he felt that were going to work, he would know them, he brought them over. But for you to say it is a wish hunt, but you forgetting to know at the same ministry, Edmund Lord was promoted to director. Thank you. We gotta be fair. And let's talk on something serious here, folks. If you get nothing to say, leave the petty tine. We gotta restrain our chat room with all the petty information. Ah, as you hallelujah. Say. Yeah, we have to do that. So I can see. Because, hallelujah. because you know, I'm not gonna restrain him, but it gets into, it, it, I'm getting frustrated because it's not ASIC that gives me. It's not Gibson that ASIC. It's not an issue about the country. Let's talk about Liberia, the goodness of our country. Our people deserve better. Let's talk about what's happening, how we can build with 20 summer days. How far have we come as a nation since Joseph Yuma Baka put his hand up and say, I do something to swear. Let's talk about those things. As he took the people's car, he took it to the garage, he sold it for scrap. That's my friend and brother. Yeah, cool. He sold it for scrap. How did I know the car was at the garage? How did I know the car is at the garage? I'm seriously on the show saying the car is parked at the garage and grass is growing through it. They not take the two front doors and the who and take it, take it use it as a part for other vehicles. I mean, that's the truth. Gibson, welcome to the show. We'll do our last last round. We'll do our closing. Let me, to the let, me, let, me, let me say my piece. First of all, I want to pay attention to what Prince Maxwell said. He, we don't usually agree, but he raised a very critical point. This position of director is not a presidential appointed position. It's a professional civil service position. Now, in the according to the civil servant rules and guidelines, those who are civil servants, they cannot suffer political decision, the consequence of political decisions. So, and if you look at this letter, it looked like the people shot themselves in the leg. The first part of it is said, we are sending you to the HR for you to be reassigned. Then at the HR, they said, when you are at the HR, you will perform all the duties they will tell you to, to, to perform. But then if you look at the last paragraph, they say, Moten, oh, all company, all, all property in your possession, your RD car or your wow, all property of the ministry, you must turn it over. So yeah. which is what they want the men to do? What they say they want you to do? The one you know, that represent his are you, no, the thing is, if you say go, you are reassigned, they may still employ with the entity. Go to the HR, the HR will tell you other things for you to do. You will perform yeah, other duties. Then they sit down, they say, all the things, government thing, your possession will give it away. So who am I now? Am I still employed? But Gibson, the <laughs> only can I get a different function. Uh, see he knows. No, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm questioning. I'm questioning the three part, the three portion what of the Jerry, okay. what Jerry, you, you, raised, you raised a good point, you and Prince Maxwell. Since you said that is a now is now a civil servant job, they refer him to the human resource department, right? Fine. The human, but, the, the but they didn't just refer you, they didn't just say go to the human resources and then be there. They said when you go there. You will perform all a job there as well, you are being required. Well, so it means you are still working for the institution, right? Yeah. Because you will still perform all a job. So I don't have to turn my IDCA over. Oh, I don't have to turn my IDCA over. The IDCA is the director. The IDCA of the company. The title, your job title, you usually own your IDCA. What are you talking about? Yes. The IDCA is the director. The IDCA is the director. The you not? You know, right? You're just talking about you're just talking about ah, Dika. Listen, Jerry, let me come in. Jerry, let me come in. Listen, let me come in. Let me come in. Let me just say what okay. I want to say. Then you come in, Prince Maxwell. Okay. Okay. This particular letter is shot itself in the leg. Go to the HR, and the HR will reassign you, or we are going to reassign you for a new training. Those are specific instructions. Okay. But when you say Turn everything over. The man is working. He cannot turn everything over. Then we just maybe you're talking about our digger with position. Why if the man have a calculator that the man will use in your office? 
But that it's for that office. It's for no, that, that office. No, there are certain things that... How that, do you know? There are certain things that are... Comp that, that it's not to you. You know that. Yes. 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 There are certain things that I accept. My man has put on my time. Jeru, you're trying to pull I'm on my time. I'm on my time. That's why he politicized him, but we'll come out after he laid your toy. I'm on my time. Why are you guys are doing that? Because Stephen has given me two more minutes. Stephen has already given me two more minutes for you to give me chance. Mr. Doggy? No. Stephen has already given me two more minutes for me to talk. What I'm saying... What I'm saying, all of us, anyone who is an employer, you have reassigned staff before. You don't say go to the you go to the HR, they will give you assignment for you to do other job. But meanwhile, turn everything that you have over. You can no, do it. It can, can be done. No, it can't. I've done it. it okay. You can't. Jerome, Jerome, Jerome. Yes. You, you have to but wait. Why Jerome you have to my wait people. a little bit. You, you stay your position. Let me say this to you. Don't just allow the brother to finish now. No, no, you, no, 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 they are removing him from his job, but the only reason why they didn't say you are dismissed is because he's a professional civil servant. He is not supposed to be affected by political movement or political action in, in the ministry. That's the only way they are using the corny words so that they can, they can still feel he's part of the ministry. This woman is out. She's not going to work in that ministry. Very few days of one or two weeks from now, you will hear that she no longer at the ministry. That's how they kick you out. They do it, calling it so you can't be there. That's not true. Uh, all right, all right, Jeru. Uh, listen to your point, right? You, you uh, listen to your point. I like the way you broke the letter down into three parts. So it is clear that the first two parts of the letter are okay. You have no problem with it. You have problem with the language used in the third part of the letter. Now. In my world, we call that ambiguity, ambiguity of words. If you, you're concerned about the issue of turning over all assets. Mm -hmm. The letter stated earlier on above that this individual is going for retraining. It didn't say retraining. It says there. Go for no, training. Sure, sure. Where is, training is there? Training? When you go to the personnel office, they will assign you in other areas and you go for training. Is there? No, 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 said. no, it says so. Read the part. Read that part. Okay, Cheru. I'm looking at the letter right here, right now. Oh, read right it. Here. Read it for the Where people. Okay, Cheru, let the man speak to now. I'm begging you. Let me tell 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 you. Let yeah, but Jerry, my, 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 Jerry, my apologies Jerry, I didn't yeah, like Jerry, to speak. Imagine the age difference, 63 to 40 something. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I even 63 to 73. Let me, 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 but I tell it that you all. But let me do that. I beg your prince. Let me eat into your time. You'll continue yeah, after yeah, this yeah, video. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, when, when you hear Jerome and the rest of them speaking on these things, let's just share this real quick. And this is why I thought we win. We will not appoint any unit by the same year of war. Keeping. And this is why I thought we win. We will not appoint any unit by the same year of war. Opa. And, and, and you see, maybe I should do and Jerome having some forgetfulness oh, issue here your secretary your campaign chair making such a reckless statement and this is why when we win you will have nobody for unity party in our government and people were celebrating on that day when he makes such a remark i call a couple of sedition i say you need to fire him if you continue with him you will, you will lose this election and will hurt you. And that's exactly what happened. You cannot make such a remark in the ninth hour of the election. So I come to say, let, let, let listen, you say what you're going to do. At least they stay keeping having there. At least they promoted Edmund, Lord. You got nothing to say? Let's move on. 
Samakanya Do Jr., you fire him. Cooper Kra, you fire him. So many people that couldn't be with you guys to say Munya Munya. You dismiss them. That now you cry, you will cry tired. Because we get 2029 to reach to. You will cry us rivers. You will cry us ocean. You will cry tire. Because every day you will not balance this equation. Because do unto others as you expect them to do unto you. And let God be the judge. We'll forgive you guys at some point. We'll bring you guys. But give us the first three years to settle. Thereafter, 2026 or 2027, whatever the year may be, then we'll, we'll try to consider, you know, associating. Look at what Carlos Gray said. Oh, we came to the club and Unity Party people don't want to hang out with us. That now you want to hang out with Unity Party people? That good English there, right? That now you want to hang out with Unity Party people? Yeah. We came to the club and they put it run away from us. We used to be the children at the uh, University of Liberia. They don't want to hang out with you. And that's the problem, I said, though. That's what, as of today, I will take the executive order on the show. I will ask you that we will put the spoon or reporter behind you tomorrow, go to the garage, show the people where the car is. If you saw any of the parts on that car, be transparent enough as you're going to meet Kobangalo. I've already asked Dama and the rest of the guys. They will be a youth principal waiting for you. It should be live. It should be live. <laughs> so, so <laughs> you know what I want you to do? I want you to kind of tell the reporter to go to the president's house for the president to tell the Labrand people where he took $10 million from to give it to the fire. I got another fully talking about Let's move on, man. Do. So I want you, I, I want you to take the orders to the president's house for the president to tell us how it said that United Party that could not pay their rent managed to to get three hundred and sixty five thousand United States dollars and dish out for party across no, the, the country. Thing, the thing so they got us to do. Let me say to you, Prince. you know why? <laughs> why do you think why do you think we have more Ali? Right? Right? All all the the show. Show. When we have Mo Ali, right? The fire Mo Ali. Immediately the new, the fire Mo Ali. No, Mo, Mo Ali was not fired. For no, 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 no. misconduct on no. the job, they fired no, 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 he was not fired. Mo Ali resigned. He was not fired. No, no, no they no, told no, no, Mo no. Ali and said he went to sign up. Are you saying, man, the boy was not fired? At the same level, at the same level, not the most. I said, listen, 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 I said, all the way Thank to book you. when there is no the life. Hey, young children. I, you said the man, you tell the man, say, go by yourself. That that was wickedness in her place. But you know what? We forgave you. Because of grace, we won today. Let me bring the last conversation on the floor. The issue of the tenant position, right? Which is so important. What say you? Let me start with uh, Brother Gibson. We got Emma Glasgow. We got... Uh, the National Road Fund, we have LTA, we have other places that people argue about this position. Let me be sincere tonight, briefly, in, in less than, on, on, on a minute, 30 seconds, Gibson. Should the government, the president, just take the drastic step, go through the legislature and just, if you are not part of the constitution with your tenure position, cut them off? Because these people got to know what's up. You're muted, Gibson. If your position is not a turning position and you are occupying a turning position, there are two ways the president can do it. He can regularize it or remove you. Because you're not, you're not appointed in accordance with the tenure, uh, tenure prop protocol. But if the president decides, say, okay, I like this person, even though they are not right footed there, but I like them, he can regularize it. He can do it he can, he can, he can do it the proper way. But for me, I, I, I wanted to say something that I've always argued that the winner takes it all. So except for civil service positions or civil service jobs, any presidential appointee 
I don't think Joseph Boyga should bother by appointing CDC people because I don't want a situation where he comes and make an excuse and say the CDC put in my government, they don't want to undermine my government. I've argued that from day one. Don't appoint CDC people, appoint solo Joseph Boyga people or you need the party, all the people that support you. But I agree with you, if the tenure position is being occupied by an individual who are not been properly vetted and put in there based on the tenure protocol, that person can be removed and the president can do the right thing by doing going by the protocol. Or the president can regularize that person and say, you know what? You are not there properly, but we're going to keep you. And this is how we're going to keep you. And they can do it. And they can do it. We, I mean, everything is not bad with the president doing that kind of stuff. Thank you, Prince Wami. So let's just name them again, Prince. Emma Glasgow, uh, uh, what's the lady name from LTA, Zappa. Yeah. Uh, you have your friend from National Road Fund. Mm -hmm. You have all these people. Yeah, let's talk about the issue of the Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, uh, first and foremost, let me let me just send a, a quick uh, recognition to someone that we all strive to exemplify. When he was in Liberia, at the time he worked in Liberia, uh, Siafa Hajj, welcome to Liberia. Uh, we all try to exemplify the level of leadership and stewardship. I remember you leading our conversation to send special treatment. No, because it is connected. It is connected. It is connected. It is connected. Don't worry about it. It's connected. I do agree with. I, I'm I'm shocked to see myself agreeing with with uh, uh, Gibson, specifically on the issue of proper vetting and protocols. I think that. For all those who have gotten a tenure position in the country, if they were not properly vetted and they did not follow the protocol concerning the tenure uh, regulation, they should be removed. But we also understand fully well that the issue of tenure position is becoming a major problem for constitutionality in the country. Now, Liberia, we, ha we have to ask ourselves, Water Liberia is still under the fragile state, the fragile state constitutional uh, perspective or state. Are we still a fragile state in the sense that we cannot handle our constitutional implementation and, and security, or that we have now removed ourselves, graduated from a fragile state where political interference into work is no longer a major problem in the country? Because these are the reasons why the NGOs and the donut, the donut partners worked with our government to bring about this tenure position so that uh, those entities and agencies can be protected and, and, and non-interference can, they can be able to do that job of, without the political, political interference. The thing that will have to happen would be our government have to go through a major consultation with all donor partners to figure out or to get the feel on this particular issue and then move into the constitutionality of it. Because if the donors are disagreeing, then it means that if we force it to go in that direction, we will have to hand the bills by ourselves for these agencies and entities going forward. But whatever we have to do with our donors, we have to make sure we are in tandem with working with them so as to make sure that the bills can be handled in a way that we want to move our country in the direction we move. That's my position on that. My position can shift, can change, but I still believe in the constitutionality power of the president. And I think the president should have a say, a very huge say on this matter. Thank you, uh, Maxwell. You know, when, anyway, at the end of the day, where you have those folks in position, uh, Central Bank, GSC, uh, LSCC, the Road Fund, LTA, Maritime, and all these places there, uh, the tenant position, you know, you got to understand it's a slippery slope. But uh, I, I want to show a picture. I want to show a picture. Maybe I, I want you guys to please confirm this photo I about to show. I've been asking for Ben Nigeria, but I think he's somewhere that I just found him. I just found Ben Nigeria. Is this Ben Nigeria? That's him, right? It appears to be Mr. Yuri. It, 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 no, it is Mr. Yuri. Yeah, it is Mr. Uh, Yuri. When they, they tell hold, on hold on, hold on. My boy, can you go look for no money, man? Watch it. You know what is this? 
Ask Jerome because he's the one making sure we know where it is. That ain't that ain't explain. This you, one you, is you. an executive mansion. Okay, thank you, Jerome. Dr. Richardson, do you know where where, where is this? No. Glenda, you want to try? I, I think what well, if that was yesterday, that would have been at the convention, I believe. Kind of great. Man, I, I don't know how the new executive mansion looks. But so that's I, an executive mansion. I, I don't I don't I have no clue. Maybe, that looks like maybe the the up uh, unity party headquarters. So I don't know. Because uh, looking at that chair there right now. Prince. That chair no, is guess, a special chair for I the guess, I can give a guess on this. Prince Wonder Euro. I said, said why is this? Well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to. I don't know. So, so you know, the reason why I make as a last on this, uh, when the president attended the program at EAW Hospital, as a sedition said, the the president went to that program. He he went to a hospital. You remember that, right? Yes. And I said, ran with that story all in our chat room on Facebook. All his folks say, yeah, the president went to the hospital. The president went to the hospital. So sometimes they force us to go ahead and dig deeper and get pictures and get photos. This is President Joseph Yima Buaka attending the 70th anniversary program at ELWA. These things are so easy for us to sit down and check. But must we check sedition every day for their own laziness and lies? This is President Joseph Yima Buaka sitting Across from the same table, Ben Nayure. Attending the 70th anniversary program. That's JB. Attending the 70th anniversary program. So how can we sit back and allow these guys then to run with a story that Joseph Yuma Barka was sick? And we just saw his car car at EAW hospital. So that's Stano, Stano. You. No, 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 don't throw something on me. Let me finish now. Let me finish. That way no, you can do your face job. Jumping. You always no, jump no, over no. me. No, you I'm not jumping over you. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come to you. But let me be fair, brother. I'm not going to jump over you. <laughs> if you want to say something, hurry up. Say it. Because this is no, very clear. Right. No, and, 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 the nation, and the nation should hear this. The nation should hear this. That you guys come up with that story every day and ask for picture and ask for video. And I, must he produce these things just to please you guys? So, so. But the only reason I'm showing this picture is because at least everybody can agree that after the election and everything, Mr. Buaka. And Ben that you at least probably they look out to eye and say ha ha maybe I don't know, but there you have it. Go ahead, I said though. Uh, yeah, right, thank you. We are talking about the uh, position. We were talking about the position issue that I want to comment on. Before I do that, let me go to the picture. You know, Sado, you you can serve as the best public relations officer for United Party. That's okay, but we're not going to allow that part on the show because on the show we're going to come here with real facts and facts. Whatever yeah. intel that we get, we proudly put it out. We know it is true. But let me say, no, I did not say talk about because there is nothing Mr. true. No, what let, else let you say want to say? Let 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 no, 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 no. I say, I say, I say, no. I say, okay, no. Let me I say, say, I say, I say no. I say, no. I say, you need to start admitting. When you guys are caught with your pants down, you need to start admitting. That's the program at ELW Hospital that you guys ran with the lies. And said Joseph Baker was sick. Joseph Baker went to ELW Hospital. He went there for the 70th anniversary program. Now you see in picture. Now I will give you video. Then you say, "Oh, you are the okay. GPR for the for the for the United Party." Oh, come on, man, be serious. Okay, so let me continue. Let me continue. This, this is the thing: when you are running a secret government with problems of transparency here and there, these are the kind of allegations you face. If you were to tell the people that President Baka was going to Ghana for X, Y, Z issue, people would not be speculating. But I will tell you this. I said, God did not ever say President Baka went to hospital. I don't go that route. I know it was also, also now you're defending you defending yourself. Well, you know, no, 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 you will not do this. I said, though. 
Yeah, no, you, are one of those, you are one of those, honor the post, you are celebrating. Honor the post, you are celebrating, as a though. Let's so be let fair. Let me end now. You know, so I take my time back. You go at the end. So again, I celebrate on anybody's post. My politics does not call for harm to anybody. So I don't celebrate on people's post when they talk about illness. I don't go that route. But let me say this one. When Abraham Weir said he saw the president's convoy going into LELW in hospital, which you just confirmed to be true, United Party folks argued that it was lie. The president's convoy did not enter in the hospital compound at all. According to them, he went to Virginia to have the convention for so, for the church. So you, are wrong. you 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 are not in. Because it wasn't the only part of his post that said he went there. He, he said he went there and he added other lines to his post. Like get you say, get what say, you, you know are wrong, I say. No, I'm not wrong. Sure. So why okay. did the United States government inform the people that yes, President Biden went ELWA thin, but he went for the program? Why would they even deny that he even went there anyways? Nobody denied. Nobody denied. That's not true. Well, we Nobody denied. Oh, Nobody okay, denied. Let me, let me go to the channel. Nobody go to I another person. Man, you wasting our time. Nobody denied. You're creating well, you a story don't, that you, you cannot don't, substantiate. Enter. Enter. You, you, have, you guys me. have created. You guys okay. have created a story that you cannot substantiate. We are yet so giving you photos. We are about to show you video, and now you're shaking the phone. Oh, not me, oh. What Jesus asked, which one of y'all will betray me? Not I, you not I, not you put your hair up. Not me, not Abraham. Y'all go to Abraham. Not me for that, man. You can operate at the government. Just people will bring you to, to life. Why even, why even refuse to accept that the president even went in the fence in the first place? Why? If the president did go there because of the problem, why not acknowledge that the president went there? And I know you were talking about uh, my action before you come in. You were talking about turning for a position and you jump over me because you know I wanted to have a point. You didn't call me up. Give me a second. Let me say it. This is what we say if we have a leader that truly lost Liberia by his action, people come and play politics and propaganda. Today, we are discussing turning. Let me remind you President Weir submitted a bill to the national legislature to recall all turning positions. And let me read what. Senator Darius Delon said at that time, Senator Delon said, the decision to send a bill to cancel all turning positions within the executive branch is dictatorial in nature. The president is practicing and wants to legalize a dictatorial tendency. This bill is against the tenure of good governance. It is against the intent and spirit of our constitution. This is what Senator Delon said. Today, you want to disregard the constitution. The very same thing you went against. Are we serious for our country? We must be sincere here. Not because you support United Party. It's okay to support it. But where is the truth? You know, go ahead and talk. Let me, let me uh, thank you. Oh, oh, uh, let, me, let me bring Colonel oh, Gray, Prince, your comments. Let me bring Colonel Gray. Then we'll go to Dr. Richardson, Prince. Colonel Gray. Senator, on the issue of tenure position, of course, uh, it's, it's healthy for, you know, to, to reinforce any kind of workforce, um, you want to retain some institutional history and knowledge that will transfer those knowledge to people who will come later. That's the that's the intent for a uh, tenured position. But you know, uh, Emma Glasgow happens to be one of the the, the stronger links of um, Mr. Mr. Weir, and and with our marine uh, asset, uh, fish. On, on sea or uh, uh, all the uh, marine life that we see sitting towards uh, Senegal. You know say People are coming and taking our treasure away from us. These were all schemes that was, were beautifully set up by the likes of the Emma Glasgow. So what you want to do, remember we're going to, we're going to have a whole session. But I don't know how we, I would twat that entire session for, for it not to happen. But if you want to weaken those links, where people have become entrenched and they're still robbing our people. Those are the kind of individuals you want to weaken their, their, their surrounding as much as you can because you want to go to the bottom of what they did in the course of that six years. I, I just feel um, you get enough 
out of um, what, what transpired in the last six years within that, that sector of our country. Not only to praise people because you, you have so many things, but how much benefit we got as a people with all the noise about Emma was doing so well. No, she was doing so well to sustain Mr. Weir. That's how I was saying this. Okay, Prince, you want to go ahead? Yes, yeah, Stanton, there's something that we're not talking about here. The reason why tenure position were, were created was for the purpose of good governance, as uh, Isaac Doe just read concerning what uh, Senator Dillon said. And I do agree with Senator Dillon's position at the time on this issue. Uh, because well, times change. Don't agree times, now. Times, times change. Times do change. So right, now we, now. right now, we can, hold, we can hold this government responsible. We can pull this government feet to the fire. This government can be accountable. The George Weah government made it clear that they were never going to be accountable to anyone else. So it's, it's a whole different situation, a whole different time. What is clear in this issue right now when we'll be talking about is the fact that tenure position, tenure position were created so that political interference can be null and void in that space. And most of those people that entered the position at the time George Weir's presidency was still active, they all became political actors instead of professionals. They were all wearing paraphernalia. They were all ex exhibiting relationship with the party. Those positions were meant so that political party interference and political interference is diminished. But we saw over the years that those individuals and those actors in those positions encouraged the interference of politics in those positions. So now we should be asking ourselves, does this mean they have compromised the, their tenure position by allowing that to happen? That is the fundamental question to ask here. Now they're all running behind the law to say to themselves and to the librarian people that we are professional, we are not involved in, we're never involved in politics, but there are records to show that they were all entrenched in the politics, whether it was post-election or pre-election. They were all in, entrenched in, in party politics, which compromised their standing. So maybe we start looking at it from that position, looking at it from that perspective, looking at it from that lens, to judge these people as to whether they still have the trust of librarian people to maintain those positions and the tenure as, as it is. Let Richardson want to go ahead. I think, I think, I think let that Richardson speak. Let that Richardson speak. Tell a second. Tell a second. Let that Richardson speak. Will come to you, please. But you want to burn me? Tell a second. That Richardson, you want to go ahead? So, uh, the issue of a tenure got to be reviewed <laughs> by this government. Uh, I don't understand why there are so many tenure positions. Uh, some of the positions. They don't require uh, someone to have the freedom to do what they are. The reason why someone, uh, in addition to what kind of Gray said, the reason why one is tenure is because uh, it gives one the freedom to act, the freedom to work without uh, getting penalized. You know, I'm in a tenure position. It's a teaching position. It gives me the freedom to teach my class and present information to them without uh fear of a political ideology coming down on me because I had an opinion. Um, let's extrapolize that to you know the current positions in the government. Um, why would someone at FDA have a tenure position? What what are what what are their fears? You know, so if the bylaw says currently we know the bylaws might hold these people in the position or maybe there may be a uh, caveat there that might allow the president to override what the bylaw says, it should be done. It needs to be visited because this is to me a waste of energy in terms of putting, keeping people in a position that can, can that can contribute, that can help our country, but they're just there because they're tenure. Even my tenure position has a caveat at the end of it. If I don't perform well, if I do anything that is unbecoming of you know, someone in a teaching institution, I can be fired by my boss, by the president of the university, by, you know, the governor of Pennsylvania, whoever, you know, but 
Um, likewise, I believe that uh, the person who's the president can fire tenure people as well, and he should look at that right now. He should look at it. It should be reviewed. There should be a task force set up to review uh, people who are in tenure positions. So thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. Give me the third second. Let me me speak one was here. Uh, uh, ten new positions. Uh, somebody talk about FDA. The reason for the FDA, don't immediately after the war, there was a consolidated effort by the international community and Liberian partners to revitalize the forest management portfolio. And because of that, they wanted something that the person they were pulled there would not be interfered with by the president or the power that be. I think that's why FDA was part of the ten new position. Originally, it wasn't. But the essence of the standing position, the like Prince said, it is intended to forestall any interference. If Dara Dillon and others in it at the time said then that it was criminal, it was dictatorial, it was an is an attempt to 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 tear the constitution apart. But now that they support Joseph Boakai, they should be the one to, to advise the president, say, Mr. President, this thing here, we can't go inside. We told the people it was wrong yesterday. When you do it now, it means we are eating our own words. It means we are speaking from two sides of our mouth. Like I said earlier, if the person in the tenure position was not properly vetted there, and the person is not on the tenure position, was not vetted, the president can correct it. But those who are already there, they cannot, they shouldn't be touched because that's the very essence of putting them there, not to be interfered with, so they can do their work properly. But again, Ellen Johnson Sally started something that, that nobody saw before. The commissioner used to be elected in Liberia. She said no more commission elected, and the Supreme Court approved that. She came and some of the tenure position, she removed some of them and put some, some people there. George Joaquin removed some people and put some people there. Joseph Boker wanted to follow the same thing, but Joseph Boker should not do it because he came to rescue. When you come to rescue, you don't destroy what you come to rescue. So That's you come to rescue, yeah, you came to rescue. You can rescue. You cannot destroy the good things. You can't come to rescue. But you can't rescue me. You want you want you want to destroy me? Yeah. So get rid of you, baby. In a way, Jeru, you don't have to close <laughs> on an argumentative note. You don't have to close on an argumentative note, Jeru. No, it's not argumentative. But, but you have to be, that was if you keep to rescue the law, system. if you keep to rescue the obedience to the law that people have not been obeying the law, that Joshua has not been obeying the law, you cannot also disobey the law. That's destroying what you came to do. If you no. came to do good governance and Joshua had not been a good governor, uh, 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 good governor, and you said Joshua was bad, he was not a good governor. So I came to restore governance. You can't destroy governance process. That's what. That's what. Rest what, kind of what kind of logic is that, man? What kind of logic is that? Yeah. If I came to, if I came to rescue the nation from disobedience to law, I would disobey the law. <laughs> no, you're not disobeying the law. You're writing the the wrong that was done yesterday. So well, you're not writing the wrong. You are doing exactly the man did. No, you are the law to write wrong. No, 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 no. no. Remy Gray, Remy Gray, you are twisting but, my words. But George, we have removed ten new position people, and you said it was wrong because the law said they cannot be removed in that manner. You mm. came to rescue us from this kind of attitude, and you do, you go and remove the same people. They see where Joshua did it, then you came to rescue. Is that no. what rescue is? No, so thank you very know. much. Yeah, yes, the issue. Yeah, yes, the guys we got a bit. Yes, yes, the issue at the end of the day, uh Jerome Gibson or uh, Gibson Jerome. Which one is your pronoun or your now? What what we want to say on the show today, my brother. Uh <laughs> I just want to My be fair. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, no. it's the 70th anniversary, the ELWA 70th anniversary. Jose Yuma Buaka have a historical tie with that hospital. It's family. We can go back in history. He was so happy to be part of that program. He met old friends for over 40, 50 years where he met Ben Ayuri, as you can see in this photo. We'll give you the video from that program. You know, we hold on to these things because people come up with stories and lies. And now I said, don't say I didn't say it. 
you are there saying President Boyka speaking. You read the same person of Barca speaking. Then that you were sitting there, and I will show you the video that he was so happy meeting the president since after the election. Then that you were so happy. At least the president shook his head. Unlike George Banner, we had a Carrasco to Ben that you were to sit down. He was going to meet the pastor and up to now, Ben that you had never had a chance to see President Weir again. But here we are, folks. So for sedition to run and say we saw Jose Yuma Barker at the hospital because he's sick. Man, that's a problem for our country. Criticize, but not imprison us. That's a big problem for our country. You want the people to believe you. At least your criticism should have some truth. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, it's very clear. We'll come up with the video, and you'll see for yourself that the entire CDC, court CDC, all they would do from one day to another is just to lie. Now you have seen it. And after that program, he went to attend the Baptist program. And we have the picture. He had a busy Sunday. He went back home. He met Prince Johnson. He met other folks. They talk. It's out, out there, folks. As a do, on behalf of your government and your people of CDC, can you please apologize? I think you owe it to the Liberian people. Okay. On, on please, behalf no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on one minute. Hold on. Let me finish. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I think you read it, Glenny. Glenn, Glenn, get picky. I think you really need to address this issue. <laughs> well, I thought you called me again. I'll be out of my no, I'll take it back. I'll call you again. I'll take it back. 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 What's the mistake I already made? Can I be taken by? Let us go. Let me go ahead. You gave me the time. I need to apologize, right? You, know, you need You're to. You're not going to apologize. You think you will apologize? Yeah. No, he won't apologize. You're not going to. Come and go to the talking I mean, points. It's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment, seriously. We can't hear you, sir. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. My, my man, stand on mute at you. We can't hear you. Yes. Let him be muted. <laughs> They are done baptizing the man with the Holy Ghost microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it won't menace you. It won't <laughs> All right. Isaac, today now your day, my man. Just leave it. Just leave it. Isaac, what is for you? Turn up. Oh, but you, you muted me. I'm saying on behalf of the people of this great nation, on behalf of all Liberians, we want to kindly appeal to the government to be transparent. Mm -hmm. We want to kindly appeal to the government to govern in light, not in darkness. We want to kindly appeal to the government to let the people know the word about of their president. We want to also ask the government to <laughs> kindly tell the Liberian people that President Baika meet in Ghana. Why did he go to Ghana? And they should not be telling the people that President Boyka did not even enter in ELWA fence, where of course he did enter the in fact. That's the transparency we want. And we are kindly, kindly apologizing to the Labuan people for their government not being transparent to them. And we really hope the government can be transparent. As a though. Let me say this to you, and I hope you and the rest of your group can hear. And hear oh, you <laughs> no, it's, it's to you because we got to go now. It's 7 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. Yes. What, what time we say? 11 or 12? I don't even know. In Liberia, I think it's 12.04. 12. But we got to go because as you know, it's important for you to understand. It is over, my brother. Accept it. Come to the last 
stage. How many stages are there that the riches in fire? In what? Now the riches in five stages of grief. Grief, yeah. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Get, get ready now. Get ready. Get to number five now. We gotta go. <laughs> yeah, leave, leave from number one. Look at the riches he play on the one. That's what the degree from. Get to the get to number five. Yeah, I said now. Yeah. Because because it's over, Isaac. It's five over. Is a so you gotta go to the you people are still angry every day they are angry don't even speak to any up person you take trouble they will make fuss with you why let's try, <laughs> let's, let's, try let, let's try to close we got to go ahead now and show this video uh the video of president Walker at the other the reason why i'm doing this slowly is because i want you guys to understand uh, yesterday, CDC ran with that nonsense. Akaris Gray and the other person, I don't know his name. And I said, do they all ran with that nonsense. Joseph Barker is saying he went to the hospital. So see for yourself. Just see for yourself and understand where we are. This is Liberia. This is a new day. We'll remind them, we'll correct them, and we'll give you the best of the story. Let's go to see the mayor at time. But it's hard Richard say you got to mute yourself. All right. So uh, there we go. At the end of the day, there you have it, um, folks. I I'm done. It it's just an embarrassment to, to opposition party, Maxwell, that you want to come back. You want to convince the people, but you cannot convince them with the truth. I think there's something seriously happening with CDC. At least say the truth. No. You know what I mean? Convince the people. Give them something. Let them believe in you. But for you to wake up in the morning and say the president was taken to EAW hospital, he seriously said he's not walking. He's in a wheelchair. And we have pictures and video, might as well. He's speaking. He said, my two boys were born right here in this hospital. He shook uh, your hands. He shook the other gentleman hand. And how can we? Oh, Stanton, we, have to, we, have to, we have to be able to look through the political noise to be able to understand what you know what we need to understand. I, I'm not going to give credence to that conversation that is being run in the media as, as pertains to the whereabouts of the president. If they want to know the whereabouts of the president, let them become EPS officers and agents. They will know the whereabouts of the president. But let me just come back to the, our, you know, to the most important thing we're discussing here. Earlier on, I stated, when I started the program, I stated that we need to pay attention to the flag of the Republic of Liberia everywhere we are. It's become a flag proliferation in Liberia. Everywhere you turn the flag, got different color, different standard, different size, different measurement, on the ground, in the air. They need to stop that in Liberia. We need to put an end to that. We need to have a standardized size of flag and a specific hosting of the flag in the country. At the AFL, it is there. If they don't know how to do that, let them call the AFL, let the AFL come in and teach them how to host the flag and the standard, the size of flag that they need to have so that we can have a unified flag in the entire country, in all government agencies and bureaus, including the executive mansion. The flag should not be on the ground in the executive mansion. The flag of the Republic of Liberia should not be touching the ground. 
that has to change. There are detailed protocol people that will want to make sure that that ends and it has to stop. In the Senate, the same thing. In the House of Legislature, the same thing. The AFL knows the standard code of the flag. They know the standard hosting of the flag. Ask them, they can provide our service for all government agencies or create training for everybody. But the way we are carrying on the flag with different colors, different sizes is wrong. The second thing, the Front Page Africa is carrying a story that we've been talking about on this network. Why you want Front Page Africa to run a story that they're not paying them? The people- No, 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 no. It's for the greater good. Thank you for the good. It's not a governmental newspaper. It's for- I understand. I understand. It's it's for the greater good. Right now, right now, I'm not paying them to use this. Run a story, but you want them to just run a story. We now have a, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs now has a Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs now has a Minister of Foreign Affairs. Don't go and take a story and say the diplomats are saying, because we've been saying it on this network for more than six months. If Front Africa wants a story, go directly to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ask them what are they doing about the payment of diplomats in the foreign service. I've been talking about that. Everybody on has never been talking about people at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs been talking about that. Don't quote anonymous uh -huh. source. Don't quote any anonymous source. Go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ask the question there. We, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs now has a minister who is working in line with the ministry, the Minister of Finance, to make sure that our civil service and our foreign service officers who are doing tremendous job get their salary. And I've yes, been saying so it here every day. Right, you've been saying it, Maxwell. You've been okay. saying it. But the so from go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We now have a minister. Go and get information. Stop quoting anonymous sources. Of course, I've it's part of journalism, bro. It's part of journalism. Everybody been seeing it yesterday. Maxwell, stick to the diplomatic role, man. Leave this They take money to go do the print. Paper. Now we have you the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Go, go, the the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. go to the Ministry and get information from there. What Thank you, Maxwell. Well. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me do my closing. Thank you, Maxwell. Well. No, 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 no. Gibson, don't do this to us, man. Don't you can't, can't run your back. The master is a new no, uh, I'm running. ambassador. I'm not running. I don't. No, master yeah, is a new ambassador on the black. We got to give him a new ambassador. I'm not running. Ambassador, I'm not running. Colonel Gray, can you do your closing? You know, I spent on. This idea that um, everywhere Ambassador Boykin moves, uh, he's going after his health. It's no hidden secret that Ambassador Boykin may have um, some health issues. So so do all of us. Uh, who doesn't? But this idea that everywhere he moves, he's going to go seek medical attention is one of the weakest propaganda um, um, you know, moves that I can, that, you know, I I I I see very very you know uncalculated on the part of those who who want to make this government performance about the health of uh, Ambassador Boyka. I remember a guy came a whole story was well, well, even pinpointing certain flow the ambassador yeah, was at, yeah. wrote a friend, and all that nonsense. And then the old man appeared dancing you know jollibly. Look, Ambassador is now wrong. But this man was, a, was elected for a purpose. God has destiny for everybody. Until he fulfills his mission, you can sit there and wish all evil, all manner of evil you can. And 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 sometimes I will ask you not to pay attention to this. You know, Madam Celebi will say it's a noisy minority. They will talk tired, as you can say, in our group. Let them talk and get tired. Every, everything they've said about about Ambassador Burke, and he appeared. It's the other way around. From, from, like I said, a guy was giving play by play description, go on the fourth floor. I can tell you now, you know, all of these kinds of college way of. Uh, I, I understand that the, you know, Facebook is free, the internet is free for some people, but don't abuse it for God's sake. Look, we have a country that needs to thrive, and, and as old as. Ambassador Baka is doing his best. Um, go back and look at uh, Joe Biden. The same thing. People are making noise, but these people are giving, the, the, you know, 
all their best to run a country. It's not easy. So the likes of the Akaros Bay, the uh, as a goal, let me make them noise. Sometimes just dismiss them as noisy minority. They will get fired. You know, at the end of the day, they'll find something more substantive to say, but uh, the health of Ambassador Baga, and, and I would say uh, if, if the Ambassador is making any any uh, medical uh, move, going to go seek doctor, I'm, I know it's not something that uh, everybody should be announcing, but hey, those are things you can't hide. Who, who's now, who, who's 100% uh, um, you know, well to the extent where they will not go see a doctor. We all, we all, we all got reason to go see doctor. I go there almost every other three, four months to check by my health. Does that mean that I can function? Yes, I can. Can function. But to come back and, and think that uh, the ambassador will prematurely uh, uh, give up the role that he was elected into, I don't think it's, 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 it's even civilized to even talk about someone's health uh, in, in a certain way. Let it only rule. And he will lead us uh, in the grace of God the way God wants uh, him to lead us. That's all I can say, my brother. Thank you very much, man. Uh, Dr. Richardson, you want to do your closing? It's so now you close, I close that with your leave. <laughs> Brother, I'm going to pass I'm going to pass it on to you. I don't really have any closing tonight. It was an interesting show. Okay, what well, okay, let, let a good Give me a minute, Dr. I, I, I will give you my time, Maxwell. I said, do you want to go? Yes, Brother, that would give you. Give me your time. Oh, no, give me your time. It, it, it's, been it's, time it's been a good show, but I wanted to... It's been a good show. I wanted to say this. On February 16, the Civil Service uh, Agency of Liberia sent out a memorandum that put trees on employment for all civil service people. And that memorandum also stated that the free will cover no transfer, not me, the UP government. On February 16, it said no transfer, no salary come up, no promotion. On February 16th, you receive a Hold on one minute. Hold on one minute. Dr. Richardson, can you mute yourself, please? Oh, okay. So, Dr. Richardson, can you mute yourself? Dama, can you mute her? I cannot. I'll just take her off if you can. Thank you. Go ahead, Asido. Right. So since I caught up, I just wanted to quickly state again. On February 16th, the civil service agency of Liberia, that controls all employment and employment related activity, released a memorandum, a memorandum across government that placed a freeze on employment, on transfer, on promotion, on salary top up. On February 16, the Ministry of Public Works sent a letter to one of their civil servants asking him for a transfer. We know it is good to defend your government. But in the interest of our country, what is this government doing? You put a freeze, you break the freeze. You move, you come. You appoint, you withdraw. I think the government should be a little confused. They need to put their acts together. And I will go further to, to say, today, one of Liberia's renowned journalists, Fedbert Brown, called Senator Honor Conner the most corrupt Liberian that have ever lived. In his podcast, he challenged the senator to ever mention his name or go after Monica Kata again, that he will release documents connecting the senator to Aleph as a can you, can, you, can, you, can you repeat what you just said, didn't you? Sorry. A renowned Liberian journalist by the name Federer S. Brown. Today, let's say yesterday, should I say the time now, uh, yesterday, uh, yeah, the, uh, on, on his podcast, referred to Senator Amara Cullen as the most corrupt Liberian that have ever lived. He said he challenged the senator to measure his name or go after Monica Tan again, that he will go out and put documents outside, allegedly linking the senator to acts of corruption. And we want to challenge the senator to go right ahead and do what he challenged, you know, to ensure that we are on a fair deal. 
And just to move on again, during the campaign, President Baikai, someone who's worked in government more than my age, promised the Liberian people that he will declare his assets. We challenged the president to do just that. But the president is not someone who just talks for the sake of talking. Thank someone you. who is referred to as an elder man. And we actually, actually want to challenge the president again to publish his asset as he promised the Liberian people. Thank like you. Libya depends on him and everything that happens in the country is his and his only responsibility. LEC is still giving up it. We want courage. Thank you. Thank you, Asido. The president would not give you a copy of his asset. He has declared <laughs> his asset. He will wait for the president time and season. It will be released to the public. Why will you please? You can say this until you get tired. Again, I think you will talk tired. You have given it to LECC. Upon the review, when they complete their mm -hmm. review, they will release as per the president instruction. Okay? So be patient. Be patient, my brother. The president will not be a George Manor we have that send the document and ask the people to hide it. Up to now, we can find your money. We had 83 million that where he took it from. So let's just forget it. Gibson, be very fast, man. You are only 10 seconds, sir. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll be fast. Look, to be honest, uh, I said thank you for taking that word from my mouth. I was just reading through uh, the the civil service, uh, the civil service uh, press release urging all government entity and the person who issued the release is a black appointee and i think he made a great point as he made a great point that if the civil service said do not transfer employees the transfer of the lady at the air at the public way was not appropriate was in violation of the civil service uh, instruction so they they have just violated their own laws and look from the beginning joseph Baker started his government so bad everything he started he did it bad he go speak, he won't fall down. He, he appoint people, he remove them. He issue, he issue freeze, he remove freeze. This is the, the exact example of what they said they were not going to do. This is why governance in Liberia have become like a fund to our people in Liberia. Liberians don't trust the government anymore. You know, when they want to come to government, they say they will, they will do the right thing. But when they get in government, they do exactly the opposite. We're just talking about Dara Dillon just now. When Dara Dillon was now a, rep, a senator, he said senators who are riding $25,000 $25, car, they were wicked. But he riding $45,000 car. But he doesn't consider himself wicked. He called it entitlement. Why is it that the white administration that came to rescue we continue to make the same mistakes that they said was wrong for which they voted against George We are. This is not the way we should we should be going. And everything that I just said here, the responsibility of this government is to do the right thing. We're not going to second guess them when they when they when they appoint Doc Copo as 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 mayor. They remove him and send him to Minister of Commerce and send another person who had never worked as a as a as, as a city mayor before. When they reported a uh, 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 to just a ministry and say we're removing you because of ethical reason, but they're taking the labor ministry. I don't know what's the difference between labor ministry and just a ministry. The two ministries are equal. They, they make can serve just a ministry, but you can serve labor ministry. It's just a means of trying to denigrate people. And this government should start. I think Joseph Baker is not participating in this appointment. I think he's sitting home when the people are writing these things. And I'm told, I'm told that his son is interfering with the appointment process. I'm not sure. I don't have any evidence. I hope it is not true. And so we have to listen. We have to watch. We have to look with eagle eyes. This government must succeed. And for it to succeed, it needs our critiquing. So we shouldn't be, <laughs> we shouldn't be tired of critiquing this government because even if we support this government, and, and Stato, let me give you a little praise. When I see you talking about the errors of other ministers, I like it because that's the way you help your government to succeed. If the press, if you can even criticize the president himself, we call that one protected individual, or protected personality in journalism. Protected personality. If you cannot expose a protected personality, but the people around him, 
If you start to expose them, the president himself will get the message. Continue to do that. Thank you very much, my brother. Again, at the end of the day, we want to say thanks to everyone for joining us. Everything you hear from these guys, then we come on the show, we say over and over, the country will be better. All you need to do is to advise and just pray. Liberia will get better. But we will speak where there is problem. We'll be truthful to our words. We'll not lie like Asido and the rest of his folks at home. Let's go back to the vehicle issue from uh, Youth and Sport. It's in the garage. They are taking parts from that vehicle. I can assure you. I will have the vehicle picture tomorrow. Where it's packed and what they're doing to it. The vehicle was sent over there and I said, don't know that he sent that vehicle in the garage. He know that. The reason why they put his name to that vehicle when they did the internal audit, Damo, is because the last person that had in their possession was I said, do. So they went to the last person. And that's the reason why they say I said, do own the vehicle. So guess what happened? When I called Asido today, he told me, he said, my man, the vehicle is in the garage, it's packed. Asido told me. When I called him, he told me, the boss said, I should not swear, but I can swear because I know I'm saying the truth. Asido told me. So my sources, he confirmed my sources statement. He said, yes, it is true why your sources told you. And the vehicle is over there. But guess what happened? They're taking all the parts. They are taking the alternator. They're taking everything. From the vehicle. So if Ko Bangalo go there tomorrow, I guarantee you, he's not going to bring anything back. Who got a key to the vehicle? I said, got one of the keys. The other one with the McKinney. I know the McKinney name. Anywhere you see Damo, let me say this to you. If you want to assign one of your guys tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, to youth and sport, you see, I said, don't laugh. You know what I'm saying is true. 9 a.m., youth and sport. Send one of your guys. Ask for the minister of Kobangalo. When I said do appear, you will go to the garage and you will do a full recording for people to see. That spoon just don't talk to Tabata. It's the truth. Do it more. And let's address this issue about ear Might as well you say, I'm going to forget it. I can't forget it. When these people don't come with the lies, we got to just debunk them. That's why we show the video. That's why we show the picture. And you know, in front of for Bernard, you he's seen the photo now. So it's okay. He had a little few minutes with JMP. But I'll tell you the truth, that's the way it is. No if and a but. Let's move on to the other. The tenor issue is the decision of Joseph Yuma Baga. I care less. They have some good people working, but it has some very bad ones that are there just, they were enriching themselves. The National Road Fund. And, you know, and some other people, I'm not going to stay here to call their entity name. But I think the government is looking into it. Look at LTA. All the commissioners, Israel, Akasana, and all of them hustling. They stay hanging there. A lot of stuff is happening in our, in our country. Now, it brings me to the challenge that Philip B. Brown pushed to Amara Kwanin. Who on this show would trust Philip B. Brown? Who would give him even one second? I don't know what you have against Amara Kwanin. But I think if Amara Corner called into question the activities at LEC, I must applaud him. Go ahead and allow Amara Corner and say he corrupt. That's your business. Right now, the people are suffering. Right now, they're in darkness. So if Amara Corner want to investigate and call the management of LEC and say, we want to hear you guys, what's going on? That's why I applaud him for that. I applaud him for that. I think it is the right step. I think they should do it. You got LDC is a mess. Let Philip Ben Brown wait for CDC coming power, then he can write and he can talk nonsense. This is the same Philip Ben Brown that was jumping around celebrating joy. We are criminal behavior. This is the same Philip Ben Brown that was saying nonsense. Why should we believe in Philip Ben Brown? If you get something, say it. Speak up or shut up. But to say, I dare you. I want to be there, Colonel Gray, and go through the military one day and just say, <laughs> I shouldn't say Colonel Gray, shoot on side, right? Yeah, man. Speak up or shut up. There will not be no way you're going to come and threaten the senator and saying that. If he said one more thing on, on about LDC, I would say that he's a, he's a crook. Go ahead and say it. 
because you know crook. Ain't nobody gonna listen to Fiddleback Brown. Nobody gonna listen to him. He's a coward. They jump from tree, tree to tree. Yeah, tell him. I say, he wanna come and develop, like he come on the show and talk. But I 100% believe that it will be in the best interest of our country if any one of those senators, like Amber Conan, stand up and say we should open an investigation as to what LDC is going through this problem. I will praise them. Till we meet again, folks. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God bless our country. Ambassador Prince Maxwell, you are always welcome as you take on your new role. No. <laughs> wait, wait, don't, don't put a thing in like brimpo here like that. I'm not an ambassador. I, 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 come, here, I come here as a privilege. Ambassador Prince Maxwell, we, we, we want to say you would be you know one of why, you know why you and Remy Gray one now for her to be appointed? You'll be one of huh? the youngest ambassadors. Let, 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 let me let you know something, Gibson. Gibson, it's a privilege for any Liberian to be appointed by a president. Not just uh, uh, if, it, it, if it is not a square peg in round hole, then you are right. No, but it's not square peg. Any, 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 any Liberian for that matter. Let me say this. We, we, forgot, we, forgot, we forgot something. Damn it. We forgot Josh Lobo. I spoke to Josh Lobo today. Where is Mia Pe Gomo? Is she no, a bad, No, no, hold on, bad. You probably don't know what you see, Mia Pe, man. You just, after this lady, stop. There's some people from the program. You're a married man. I spoke to Josh Lobo. <laughs> hey, man. To tell you the truth, I want us tonight to pray for Josh Lobo. I told you I want to offer prayer. Josh Lobo need our prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Remember oh, our brother, Josh Lobo. We pray, oh yes, God, yes. that you bless our brother through the dark age. We give him holy water too. Bless do. him, oh God, wherever he may be in the Lagoon Hotel, bless him. <laughs> wherever he may be in the location or in the prayer. <laughs> oh, he will eat the water he may drink. God, I bring my dear friend to you. Please. <laughs> bless him. <laughs> In Jesus' name, Amen. They know your we, politics. I swear. <laughs> we need a prayer for Josh Lobo. I say nothing. I just want to pray for my brother Josh Lobo. So, tell him what's going to me today. Go, 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 go. Josh Lobo, I beg you. What happened to Mepa Gomo? She not get a job yet. But I know Mepa Moro, my Fatu Sherry. Congrat. Uh, good to see you on the show. Josh Lobo cry. Josh Lobo cry. Josh Lobo cry. I fell for Josh Lobo. If you can connect with seriously. I've Why you not bring up people on the if show? You can, if, you can connect, <laughs> if you can connect with George Dobo, I will say take your phone call and call him tonight. Why are you always bringing I people? I want us to remember the brother. He's my friend. John, what has he done? Let me finish. I talked to the man today. Through the McDonald, through the McDonald draft, through the man ran this thing. But I still believe that President Braga get a place for George Dobo. I believe that George Lowe will be appointed very, very soon. <laughs> I believe that George Lowe will not return to America in shame and disgrace. I believe that if any of other person, any other list coming up, I just believe that George Lowe will, will be on it. Even if that sweep of jobs, no, 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 no. Listen, my man, prayer, right? Prayer can go on millions, man. You were on the show the last time when I said something about you, and I, and it's good that you are here. You know, I don't know. I beg you, I said, no, no, you can't bring your friend to a different issue. I don't want to talk about the issue. I said, I will give you the time. Let me end my prayer. Josh Lobo, 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 Josh Lobo
in faith. I stand in faith. I know. I stand wherever George Noble is tonight. It's 1234. Whether he's at the Calabash, whether he's on Nathan Street, whether he's in Allen Lagoon, anywhere he finds himself. Tonight, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe so, so, you know, as I was saying, for you, you're on the show the last time that I said this. You know, I mean, you are a young man, I don't know you personally. Young, young on the show here. Uh, and behind you, I share one thing in my mind. Uh, for you, didn't and you have never spoken of anything. I just said, praise and praise, man. But I'm afraid we praise all people that I get judged about praise. The foreign minister, in my opinion, needs people like you in her orbit. Listen, don't tell you our government, we're begging you. Let's not put me on George Dobo. Don't tell you our government. Yeah, yeah, don't tell you our government. Oh, seriously, don't tell you our government. Zero. All right, all right, guys. Thank you. 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 That job, presidential job, for many, many years, they still run it. If I intend to be anything in government, what is the crime in that? So I say this to tell you that, that like you, Remy, like, this is why I say so. This is why I say so, Remy. This is why I say so. It's surprising for me, Remy. It's surprising for me that if you look at the wrong things in Bucket government and turn it to be good things. You are not like that. You are not like that. You see the man, you see the man twisting people here and there, a point a person today, move a person, bring another person, move a person. But you said the man has the right to do it. That's part of the that part of the opportunity of the closeness. But listen that, but listen, let's say I beg you too, or you are begging you. Yo, yo, do your closing last. Damo, yes, sir. Yes, yes, or are you closing the show? Yeah, We're I'm not getting enough time when we are last. I beg you, Casey. Casey, yeah, I'll get your 10 seconds, I promise. Uh, Prince Maxwell, seriously, as always, we appreciate you. And again, thank God that the family is okay when I reach out to you. See you guys. We're on a way to thank God. Conor Gray, as always, we appreciate you. Dr. Richie saying, uh, Sister Glenny, our sympathy goes to Fatima. She lost her knees. I mean, just a few hours ago in Europe, uh, it is, it's heavy for the family. But we pray to God, whatever you know, Fatima, please reach out to her. We pray that God can strengthen the family. All right. And this thing about death it is appointed unto all men wants to die. And after this, the judgment. So we all should expect it, but God is above with God us through. I want to say it seriously speaking, when we talk about our friends and our family here, we mean well for them. And I mean well for Josh Lobo. I mean well for Fadika, the other brother. You know, but I heard something today which was very concerning. I want the librarian people to watch out. Fadika, they are twins. When AB was going on operation, instead of carrying the newly appointed deputy director, AB carried the one that can be on our show mistakenly. Liberians, you gotta be very careful. A, B, the LDA boss. They were going somewhere. The one that on our show, let me tell you now, that is small brother. The one that usually appear, but sometimes he do his own podcast. That's that one they made deputy. But what happened today, I got one Liberian. And I got one all the women that are over there. It's very important. They are twins. They are not the same. You see them? They are twins. I know that where you are going. <laughs> no, no, no. We got to say this. Do you want women specifically? They wear the same clothes. <laughs> and these guys, then they are so bad in doing it. If we have the picture, I think I sent you the picture. Uh, uh, put the picture up. I'm begging you, before we leave, let's make it very clear. 
they are twins and AB mistakenly, mistakenly AB carry the small brother. So when he carried the small brother, I'm gonna say if you can't off first, you're the small, you're the oldest. But the one that on our show, AB carry him. He wasn't the one that they appointed. They speak the same way. They do what they have to do in the same everything. So then when they call me, let me tell you, I reached out to Fadika. Fadika said, my man, lead that team. That's how we operating here. <laughs> and it is concerning because this is not Jogo. Fadika had called me. Fadika said, my man, lead that team. That's how we operating here. So today, I'm here to inform you. Not only AB will be confused. To all, to all of our sisters, <laughs> to all of our sisters, be careful. <laughs> You will come in one way and leave another way. Please leave the guys there alone. I've been very, 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 very straight up. Leave the guys alone because they are twins. You will get two for one. You don't want two for one. I did not see the one That's not why. That's not why you set up for Colonel Gray. Look at this picture. You will be confused. Those people don't even look alike, man. My man, I have seen these people in person so many times. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Labyrinth Ghana will be very fast. Mistakenly, they will say that my friend, AB will be very fast. If they guy can take the closer and give it to your brother, you will not recognize them. So we begging you. <laughs> We backing y'all. Which one are two for one? I want to understand. Yeah, that would be two for one. So let the garden be. Or what you need to do, I will advise you. If you see one, scratch it on the face. <laughs> Put some kind of scars on him that you can remember. <laughs> do something for you to remember. Oh, Put a bango on him. They will finish that bango. <laughs> Folks, you have a good night. We yeah, guys, thank you very much. You have a good night, man. Yeah, a beautiful show, show like Thanks. always. Yeah. Good night, man. Isaac, good I night. appreciate the compliment. I do appreciate it. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, Isaac, Isaac uh, uh, complimented you, man. You did extremely yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. And I really want to see the minister look at him. And, I, you know, I mean, he understands the language. There was something I was thinking about. The man just came and talked about it. And I was like, you know what? This guy knows the, the, the language of the of the diplomatic space, mm -hmm. and I think we have the foreign minister a lot. She needs to definitely yeah, put him on and, and have him have uh, around. I mean, you know. we, we, are, we, we are all Iberians want the best for our country, right? right. I'm not just the only person. There are many guys that are dead. I want the same thing just like me. But let me we, get off the show. Many of us are just tired of the bad name of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's all. Period. Nothing more than that. But hey, see you guys. All right, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. You've been support. Yes, you got to be there. Say your guys in there because as we go and ask for Minister Ko Bangalo, we got to find a solution to this and also ask Aaron or whosoever recorded the pupu uh something at the Capitol building. They should do a follow up. Want to know whether they have fixed it? All right, let's try to do a follow on these stories to give good report to our folks. Again, I see that you're feeling much better. You are back. It's good yes, to sir. see you as always. All right. So yeah. Nelson is coming in later, right? Yeah, Nelson already here. Uh, oh, he there? Yeah. Can you exactly. guys exchange? Can you guys compare note to see the banners of uh, the Bible? Say where your where your treasure is, that where your heart will be. <laughs> so let's see what's going on. Why he should do audit report to me? Our we thought I want. Yeah, yeah you please do your audit report. Yeah. All right, man. You have a good night. All right, Chief. Good night. All right. All right. So, folks, um, that does it for Spoon Talk tonight, or should I say this morning. Up next will be Late Night Politics with Nelson Collet and the rest of his crew. Uh, so, we'll take a short break to transition for Nelson to get all set up to present his show. Thank you so much for watching, and a pleasant good night to you. A good morning, I should say. From the top of Wologisi to the beaches of Maryland, we cover Liberia like nobody else does. This is Spoon 107.5 FM. From the top of Wologisi to the beaches of Maryland, we cover